I'm Christine Lisi. The Knicks will be without Julius Randle the remainder of the season. The All-NBA forward needs season-ending surgery on his dislocated right shoulder. He's expected to be ready around the start of next season. Will be reevaluated in September. The Knicks, fifth in the East, one game out of third. Bucks point guard Damian Lillard could return from a groin injury tomorrow night against the Raptors. Milwaukee trying to hold on to second in the East has lost four of five. And a couple of worrisome issues for the Bucks for ESPN NBA analyst Austin Rivers. They will go nowhere in these playoffs if they don't have their full roster and if they're not in full health. Uh, secondly, they have to get better on perimeter defense. We've seen them drop too many games now this late in the season where it is a cause for concern. You know, we, we need to see more consistency with them. Pelicans power forward Zion Williamson injured finger is day to day. NFL Eagles and left tackle Jordan Maialata agreed on a three year $66 million extension, $48 million guaranteed. USC's hired Arkansas's Eric Musselman as its next men's basketball coach. He takes over for Andy Enfield now at SMU. Feeling great starts with a great shave, and great shaves start with Barbasol Shaving Cream. That's Barbasol Shaving Cream, an American classic for over 100 years. Close Shave America, Close Shave Barbasol. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR. I'm Matt. You're a loser, Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Who? And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Kendall Rogers, one hour from right now. Sean Fazand in hour three. Blake Baker talking about fixing Harold Perkins. A seven round mock draft. We got a ton to do. Let's get going. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. All right, y'all. LSU and Vandy game one. We're three hours from first pitch here on this Thursday. And I guess I'm going to say what everybody else has already said in some capacity. You have got to go win this game. Um, they haven't made it official yet, at least not to the best of my knowledge as I'm looking. But was told earlier today, and I think a lot of the game notes and everything uh, do have Luke Holman throwing game one. Gage jump going game two for LSU and then TBA for game three. Um, I want to remind you, last week when LSU decided to pitch off, they kept Holman and jump in their regular days and sort of went whole staff on Thursday against Hagen Smith. This was Jay Johnson last week on the decision to keep Holman and jump on their regular days. I always focus on our team first, and I addressed this with the team yesterday. Like It actually has nothing to do with our opponent. It has everything to do with Holman and Jump. Both threw over 100 pitches last week. So we need those guys for the duration, and I just felt like it was a smart move this week. Depending on how these games go, we could bump them up next week because we're going Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So it really had everything to do to position ourselves with our two best starters, staying on track and staying on track for the long haul of this thing. So, um, said it had nothing to do with the opponent. And a lot of you didn't like the fact that I said that was a Pinocchio move. Um, yes, coaches lie. He was putting himself, as he said, in the best position to, as he felt, to win last week. And there are people who agreed with that. Pitching off, right? What was percentage-wise going to give you the best chance to win that series? You were not, you felt like, you didn't want to burn Luke Holman against Hagen Smith. And it didn't work. You got swept. And now you're in a desperate situation. Jay Johnson, when he met with reporters yesterday, 
said this about his the decision to make with the rotation. I have, but we're not going to announce it because I don't I don't know what uh, Vanderbilt's doing, and I understand. I mean, they had a doubleheader on Sunday like two weeks ago, and these Thursday things it, it may seem not not a big deal, but one it's a big deal. Man. I mean, if you know one of those two guys go down because we pitched them too early, it's going to get real hard. It's already really hard, and I'm not about to to do that. Um, not to say that we won't, but I need a full evaluation of today. If one of those two guys go down because we pitched him early, well, he's got the full evaluation now, and he's going to bump him up a day. And it's 100% the right thing to do. Let's be clear. I'm not saying that you should be careless and throw college pitchers carelessly on short rest. Okay? And I want to be even more abundantly clear. I think Jay Johnson and his staff, all three pitching coaches since he's been here, the medical staff, the training staff, they're awesome. They they go to almost the, it, it, extensive lengths to make sure all of these guys are healthy. They track everything from pitch counts and the bullpens and velocity and everything. If there's ever any any hint of something wrong, like it's just the the way that they do it, the way it's done in this day. So I'm not in any way suggesting that throwing Luke Holman on a day short arrest is the staff being, please don't misunderstand me. That's not them being careless. They threw Paul Skeens last year every time they played a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series on Thursday. Like, this is a very common practice in college baseball. And for a lot of these guys, next year they'll be in pro ball where they're pitching every fifth day. So, yes, they can handle it. And it's not... Anything you don't want to take it lightly, of course, but it's not like some extreme example, like in the big leagues when you throw a guy on three days rest. Like that would feel extreme. This is not. This is common. But so too is pitching off, and that's what LSU did last week because they were avoiding Hagen Smith. Jay Johnson doesn't have to say, it, and it's fine. I'm going to say it. That's what they were doing last week. They were doing what they felt gave them the best chance to win that series, not protecting arms because. These guys are fine right now. So they're going to bump them up a day today, and you're going to go home and jump TBA. And that is 100% the right decision. And it's what they should have done a week ago. If Holman, Holman is your best pitcher, think about how you felt. You lose the weekend to Mississippi State. You come back home against Florida, and Holman Herring were awesome against Florida on that Friday night, weren't they? That was the most complete game that LSU has played. And you you totally set the tone for that weekend. And you went into Saturday and you got an early lead. And but for the, the ball that skewed it away in the eighth inning on the strikeout, you win that series. And our whole conversation feeling around this team is different right now. But it was the right decision because you got to have your tone setter out there first on the weekend. That's Luke Holman. So, yes, throwing Luke Holman today is 100% the right decision. They should have done it a week ago. They got to go get this win, and they need Luke Holman on the bump to go do it. Now, we've talked a ton about the pitching staff, but quite honestly, pitching isn't why you lost last weekend. You lost last weekend because you couldn't get timely hits. And through three weeks right now, LSU's offense is 13th in the SEC in batting average, in SEC games. LSU's offense collectively is hitting 243 in SEC games. Only Missouri is worse than LSU offensively in conference play. Now, in fairness, you faced three really good pitching staffs. You faced Mississippi State, who's sixth in the league in staff ERA in conference games, Florida, which is seventh, and Arkansas, which is first. You faced three really good pitching staffs. But you haven't been able to deliver. And the question that I think is going to be so interesting for Jay Johnson to answer is do you lean on your veterans or do you go with your youth? We've seen some guys like Ethan Fry and Ashton Larson get some run here of late. Steven Milam's been playing a lot, and Jake Brown looked like he was kind of starting to maybe push his way for some more playing time. Do you lean on veterans or do you go with the younger guys with the higher ceiling? That's the question right now that I think Jay Johnson's got to answer going into this weekend. Now, we've talked a lot about the leadoff spot as well. And it may surprise you because he's had his struggles this year, but Michael Braswell 
in conference games is leading the SEC in on-base percentage. Michael Braswell has a 541 on-base percentage, and he is leading the conference in SEC games. So for me, I want to see Michael Braswell lead off. Maybe a product of Braswell's success is the fact that he is hitting down in the lineup, that he doesn't have the pressure of being a leadoff guy. I don't know. But what I do know is you've tried damn near everything else, and nobody can seem to get on base for you. But you've got to have guys on base for your run producers, for Tommy White and Hayden Travinsky and Jared Jones. So I think that's a move I'd like to see this weekend and maybe take some of the pressure off of the younger guys, off of Milam and Fry, and let them hit down in the order and see if that can maybe get them going a little bit. Look, here's the, here's the truth about Vanderbilt. They're a great pitching staff. They always have a great pitching staff. It's one of the things Tim Corbin is known for, right? You know the list of the long list of guys that have been there and have been awesome. Offensively, they're a pretty good team offensively, but they do not leave the yard. Vanderbilt has four home runs in nine conference games. By comparison, LSU has 17, okay? This isn't the team that's going to beat you with a bloop and a blast. You're not going to go walk single three-run homer. That's not this team. So if you throw the ball over the plate and you play really good defense behind your ace pitcher, you should have an opportunity, if you hit in the clutch, to win this game. If for Vanderbilt this year, it has been feast or famine in conference games. Vanderbilt got uh, swept Auburn to open up conference play. They got swept on the road at South Carolina. And then last week, they swept Missouri. Now, they swept two, two bad teams. But they went in their only road series in the league. They got swept. So maybe this is an opportunity for LSU to get right against what's been a pretty good team in Vanderbilt, but a feast or famine team that has played one road series and got swept at South Carolina. So I'm hopeful they can get it. And this is one that you desperately need to get because – as we look at it, you're two and seven in the conference. You know that story by now. You got to go to Tennessee next weekend. You're at home right now, playing Vanderbilt, and you got Holman on the bump on a Thursday night, and it's one you got to get. You have got to go get this game tonight. I'm going to say what everybody else has said. Sure, you could lose this one, come back, win the next two. Mathematically, that's true and possible. But it feels like for a team that got swept at Arkansas laid down at home against Southern. You're going to Tennessee next week. This is the one where you target and say, it is time to circle the wagons. Whatever you have in this team, like whatever uh, guts, courage, moxie, whatever emotion, intangible thing, however you want to label it, whatever this team has, we're going to find out this weekend. Because if you actually take pride in wearing that uniform and playing for this program, like, You've been embarrassed, and you're way more talented than your record shows. It's time to go let that manifest. And it starts tonight, and you've got your best pitcher on the mound to go do it. So go do it. Go win a game tonight against Vandy. Try to get this thing turned around. Okay, it's after further review. Show open brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with a great taste of Bud Light. Of course, Bud Light and our friends over at Mockler, great sponsors of Rock the Country, going on out at Lamar Dixon this weekend. Jason Aldean, Kid Rock, going to be a great weekend. You'll see plenty of Bud Light out there with our friends from Mockler Beverage. And they're the official beer of AFR, the official beer of the LSU Tigers. So whether it's uh, the defending national champ baseball team, the women's national champion basketball team, uh, you'll find plenty of the commemorative bottles still around. And when you're out at the box or you're out at the PMAC or wherever you may be, you'll uh, see plenty of uh, ice-cold Bud Light. So drink easy with the champs. Bud Light, the official beer of AFR. Okay. Um, we're glad to have you aboard with us. Let me knock out a quick break. Earlier today, a good week for LSU uh, football as they're moving toward the spring game, which is a week from Saturday. Um, it was Joe Sloan meeting the media earlier this week, and today, uh, Thursday, it was Blake Baker. So Blake Baker was asked, how you fix Harold Perkins? We'll let you hear what he said next on AFR. AFR. Brought to you by River City's One Hour Air, where they're always on time, or you don't pay a dime. Have you done it yet? Have you gotten your preseason AC tune-up yet? If you haven't, I'm going to give you the number. Call River City's One Hour Air. Call them today and schedule your preseason AC tune-up. Look, whenever you have, your AC stops, when it's 100 degrees outside, and River City's One Hour Air has to come out, and there's a big issue that can be costly, 
what you want to prevent is a little bitty issue from becoming a very big, very costly issue down the road. That's one of the reasons you do your preseason AC tune-up. Also, to make sure your unit is running efficiently. You want it to run at max efficiency, so that way it saves you money on your cooling costs, and also to prevent very costly repairs or replacements. It'll extend the life of your unit as well. Call River City's One Hour Air. 752-0001. 752-0001, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. After further review with Matt Moscona. Well, today was deadline for Haley Van Lith to um, enter the WNBA draft or declare if she's going to play another season of college basketball. She does have a super senior year. And, um, man, this is well, this is actually just breaking news. So um you can go ahead and hit the breaking news sounder. Uh Matt Zenitz of um Matt Zenitz of two four seven is reporting that uh Haley Van Lith is not entering the WNBA draft. Uh she is, however, entering the transfer portal. So um that's a bummer, man. You'd love to have Haley Van Lith back at LSU for uh, another season, but you know she was a, uh, a a team contributor this year. You know that was one of the best scorers in the country a year ago, and um, and she is a two guard, 
And with Alexis Morris graduating and Kim Mulkey not really having a true point guard, uh, Haley Van Lith was a, a true team player, stepped up and changed positions and ran the point primarily for LSU this year uh, to allow Michaela Williams to play the two. So Michaela Williams as a true freshman averaged 14 points a game this year. So um, Haley Van Lith entering the transfer portal. Uh, Matt Zenitz had it first. I'm seeing a lot of others now reporting it, but uh, Kim Mulkey, it's a big void to fill with Angel Reese going pro. Van Lith will play another season of college basketball, but will play it outside somewhere other than Baton Rouge, uh, presumably. I guess the opportunity to return to LSU remains, but entering the portal would certainly uh, presume that she's going to have a lot of suitors and uh, and she'll head elsewhere. Okay, uh, it's after further review. We're glad to have you hanging out with us here. I do want to talk about Blake Baker in just a quick second. Brought to you by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, lmfj.com, lmfj.com. For Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, they're the best. If you are thinking, gentlemen, about popping the question, go to the best. Go to Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. When you walk in the door, you're not going to be greeted by a disheveled uh, person pulling a calculator out, crunching numbers in an empty store to tell you how much money you're going to save. You're going to be greeted with professionally dressed folks that are going to greet you warmly, that are going to offer you chocolates and a cold beverage, and that are going to make you feel like what you're doing, buying a diamond ring that you're going to give to the woman you love, to ask her to spend the rest of her life with you, that that's going to feel like a special occasion because it is. It's the Lee Michaels experience. It's what they perfected over four decades. LMFJ.com, LMFJ.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Um, Blake Baker met with reporters on a Thursday as the Tigers are a little more than a week away from the spring game. So most all of Blake Baker's first spring as LSU's defensive coordinator, uh, the heavy lifting is done. It's just a couple more practices and then the, then the spring game. And one of the biggest, I, I hesitate to call it a reclamation project, but maybe for lack of better phrasing, one of the biggest uh, objectives or tasks, maybe opportunities that Blake Baker has in this spring and is charged with in this season is how do you maximize Harold Perkins? Uh, 247 Sports earlier this week did a list of like the biggest impact linebackers in college football. They had Harold Perkins number one on the list. And it's all because we saw the tantalizing ability in his freshman season. And even though, this isn't new, we've talked about it. Even though Perkins statistically mirrored his freshman season in his sophomore year. I mean, he went from 72 tackles to 75. Had 13 TFLs as a freshman, 13 as a sophomore. Seven and a half sacks to five and a half. Four forced fumbles to three. Three passes defense to six, had an interception each season. I mean, you look at his stats, and year one and year two are virtually identical for Harold Perkins. And yet still, we look at Harold Perkins, and we kind of say, man, what happened in his sophomore year? And a lot of it was because, I think, the defense stunk. That's that's my intuition anyway. And you know, even the, the seven and a half sacks Perkins had in his freshman year, there were three of them came against Arkansas. Most of it was in one game. And I understand he did it in fewer snaps, but the, the production is still the production. It was just that even if Perkins got a TFL or a sack on a second, so he got third and 18, teams converted because LSU's defense stunk. I think that was as big a part of it as any. But of course, the other part of it is that Harold Perkins spent the entire offseason last year trying to move to off-ball linebacker. And after one game against Florida State where he was neutralized, I think they collectively realized this ain't a good idea, and they tried to fit him into that Nickel Sam role that he played largely for the rest of the season. Um, we've heard Brian Kelly talk about it, alluding to getting Harold Perkins ready for what he's going to be at the next level, and I understand that. But at the same time, you still have to maximize Harold Perkins now to help this defense win. And they're trying to convert Harold Perkins yet again to an off-ball linebacker, only this time you got a defensive coordinator who is maybe more suited to do that. I mean, Matt House was a was a linebacker coach by trade in the NFL, and he couldn't do it. But Blake Baker seems to be a guy people trust to maybe help this manifest with Harold Perkins. So when Baker was meeting with reporters, naturally they were going to ask him about that transition and moving Harold Perkins inside again. I think Perk has done a phenomenal job buying into what we want to do. I know that's always the, the number one question I get is, how are you going to use Harold? 
I think you can use Harold in a variety of different ways. I think we have to start him somewhere and get him really good at that. But he's so explosive. He's got an innate ability to really turn the edge. You know, So again, we're going to find out what he does best, and we're going to utilize his skill set. And hopefully, matchup-wise, do it against their worst player. Uh, he can play inside linebacker. He's grown exponentially, and, and it's, it's hot in here. <laughs> um, but he's, he's grown exponentially as far as his, uh, you want me to stop or keep going? An alarm sounded during Blake Baker's answer talking about Harold Perkins. Um, is that not just poetic justice? Did you hear the exact, Muse, can you go to the exact point in the answer when he's talking about Harold Perkins and the alarm sounded? Listen again. Against their worst player. Uh, he can play inside linebacker. He's grown exponentially. And, and it's, it's hot in here. <laughs> he, he can play inside linebacker. He's grown exponentially. And then... He's grown exponentially. And, and it's, it's hot in that here. That was almost like... Uh, that was like straight out a liar, liar. You know what I mean? You tell a lie, then kaboom. Mr. Falk, would I be accurate... If I described your relationship with Mrs. Cole as totally professional, I object, Your Honor, and I move to strike! <laughs> Harold Perkins has grown exponentially. Is your relationship with my client entirely platonic? Not! <laughs> is not your relationship with my client, boy! Bad baby, bad baby. Did you ever not make love? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we're all hopeful that it works out. But could that not have been any more perfect, perfectly timed in the entirety of that press conference at the exact minute, the, the exact second the alarm sounds is when Blake Baker's talking about Harold Perkins. Exponentially, and, and it's, it's hot in here. <laughs> he can play inside backer. He's grown exponentially. <laughs> All right, like, I sincerely hope that he does grow exponentially and Blake Baker is is um, uh, is being forthright there and he maximizes Harold Perkins. But if you can't understand and appreciate the comedic timing of that alarm, uh, I, I can't help you because that was just absolutely beautifully placed. But Baker did go on. Um, and finish that answer after the alarm about Harold Perkins. He's a really good blitzer, as we're finding out this spring on the inside. Um, he's really good in coverage, so there's not much that the guy can't do. We just can't overload him with all that right now. But he's done a really good job learning the defense. He's done a really good job improving it inside linebacker. You know, that was one thing even when I told him when I, in the recruiting process. You know, he didn't play inside linebacker in high school. He played running back. He played receiver. They put him at like a monster backer and kind of see ball, hit ball. So it's new to him, but he's really embraced the role um, and again we're going to find ways to utilize his skill set best and, and hopefully put him on their worst player every single week so we have a lot of big plans for him but we gotta we gotta crawl before we walk but proud of him he's done a really really good job for us this far I do love that answer I think that is the most honest way to approach this like you gotta crawl before you walk we're gonna try to scheme him against their worst player which yes you now there are offenses that can certainly scheme against Harold Perkins, and a lot have done it. They've schemed Harold Perkins out of the box. They've had him flexed out. He's running downfield, covering backs or tight ends. Yes, there are going to be offenses that do that, that scheme Harold Perkins away from the line of scrimmage to, to mitigate his impact. But I love the approach from Blake Baker there. And I also love the way he's complimenting Harold Perkins' um, willingness to learn. And sometimes that background helps, right? A guy that was such a great athlete in high school that was so versatile, he wasn't playing off-ball linebacker. So before last season, his sophomore season in college, that's the first time he's ever playing off-ball linebacker. It always rings in my head when Derry Beckwith was here, former All-SEC linebacker, before last season. And Derry was one of the guys that stood up and said, I don't like this idea. Because, and Derry was saying, this guy was like an all-state linebacker, four-star, all-everything in high school. Talked about his first day at LSU, and things are he's used to the position, and it's like the speed of the game was like he was he was in quicksand. Like, imagine trying to do that having never done it, like Perkins was last year. And then you're on the field against Florida State. 
And that team, yeah, it's going to take some getting used to if that's the commitment. But I also think the other thing that Baker said there about Perkins is it's not going to be like exclusively at off-ball linebacker. They're going to put him where he can best impact the game. And yes, part of that is going to be at the off-ball spot, so moving him around. Um, Baker was asked one follow-up about you know why they feel he's better suited inside this year. Give a listen. Schematically, I really don't even know what they did last year. So I can't answer that from a schematic standpoint. But inside linebacker, to me, it's an instinctual position. But the way you gain instincts is by getting reps. So the more and more reps he gets, the more and more he continues to grow. And and, and you've seen that so far. But that's really what it's going to come down to is, is making sure that we can maximize his reps, maximize him seeing different looks, and then playing off of that. And then simplifying the game for him. You know, I think you go back to 21 with, with Damone Clark. Same thing is, is everybody said, oh, he can't play inside linebacker. He can't. If you simplify the game for any kid, they can do what you ask him to do. And that's part of being a good coach, in my opinion, is is asking a kid to do something that he can physically do and then demand he do it. So he'll, he'll be just fine. I'm excited about him. I don't know that – listen, I understand coaches stand at microphones and they – and especially in the spring when optimism abounds, they answer everything to the affirmative. You love every player. they got an endless ceiling. You love what they're doing. But I don't know that that Blake Baker could have been any more honest. Look, the only way to do this, he's never played off-ball linebacker. The only way to do it is to get reps, and we're going to get him reps. And he's working really hard at it. I think that was a very honest approach with an understanding that he has a super high ceiling. So, yeah, get him the reps, and let's let's see how maybe it goes. I I still – it put me in the category of, 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 of skeptical because – and it's not just that you're taking a guy – it would be different if this was a project, right? It would be different if it was a guy who you felt was a really good athlete, maybe an athlete without a position, and you were trying to teach him the position to get better. This is a guy who has a freakishly elite skill set at something that in football is so valuable. That's rushing the passer. And taking him away from that role, not entirely, but taking him away at all from that role feels like you're intentionally lessening a, a, a massive advantage you have. So I think that's where my, and probably a lot of your skepticism is rooted. And I think that's fair. But do you trust Blake Baker? And I think you're at this point where you don't have any choice but to trust Blake Baker. He's a really good coach. He, he took an awful defense at Missouri and made, that was 108th in the country, made him 35th in the country year one. You know, a, a dramatic improvement who's, who's developed linebackers. You have to look at him, give him the benefit of the doubt, see what he can do with Harold Perkins, and find find that best role in uh in 2024. Okay, uh, we're glad you're hanging out with us here. We're brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Windows door siding, Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Oh yeah, they do indoor shutters as well. I tell you every day uh, as we sit here, you'll never hear me talk about price when we talk about Relief Windows. I'm not going to sit here and tell you they're the cheapest because they're not going to be. They're never going to be. So. If your initiative is, I'm going to call five different window companies to see who's going to give me the best price, that's never going to be relief windows. So please understand that. If you're just shopping for who's going to give me the best price, don't call relief windows because they're not going to be the best price. But they are going to sell you the finest quality windows, door siding. Their installers are going to measure twice to install once. They're going to pick up after themselves. You're going to be perfectly comfortable with the people who are in your home, around your family. When they leave, it's going to be as if they, they were never there. And if anything does go wrong, you know they're going to fix it. Relief Windows has a lifetime transferable warranty on labor, material, and glass breakage, and they never take a dollar from you until they're done and you're thrilled. That's Relief Windows. It's just going to be a better experience with better products and better service. It's Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Okay, some big news in SEC basketball we'll get to next. And a college football super league. There are administrators talking about it on the record. That's next. It's AFR. AFR.
after further review with Matt Moscona. See where you stand on the leaderboard for the Million Dollar Bracket Challenge powered by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light at 1045ESPN.com. First place wins $2,024 cash. Second place gets a 75-inch TV and sound bar. Third place, a two-night stay at the Beau Rivage. It's the Million Dollar Bracket Challenge powered by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light. Arkansas is looking for a new basketball coach. Uh, USC has announced and made it official. Eric Musselman is going to be the new head coach there in Los Angeles. So, um, Musselman, the former LSU uh, associate head coach under Johnny Jones, uh, then went to Nevada where he was the head coach, has been at Arkansas since the 2019-2020 season. So, five seasons at, uh, at Arkansas, which saw them reach... Uh, heights that that program hadn't reached in uh, in quite some time, man. But um, it was a team that went to the uh, the Elite Eight twice and the Sweet Sixteen. So you know, after the COVID year as his first year, Elite Eight, Elite Eight, Sweet Sixteen, then then missed postseason altogether this year with a sixteen and seventeen record. Uh, but hired away and headed to Los Angeles. So uh, Eric Musselman, the new head coach at USC, uh, Arkansas. Now looking for a new basketball coach. We'll certainly follow that as it goes along. All right, it's after further review. I, I'm not going to do around the SEC because I want to talk about this college football super league. We're brought to you by Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. ShawBillsTire.com, ShawBillsTire.com. Locations all over South Louisiana. And of course, if you need tires, go to the place that's going to sell you the best tires on the road for the cheapest price possible and is going to treat you like family. So yes, buy tires at Shaw Bills. It's that simple. But also... If you need your tires rotated, if you need an alignment, if your brakes are squeaking, if you need an oil change, Shawbills can do all of that. You can schedule service at the website. You can bring your car in, drop it off. Look, they always believe as part of their customer bill of rights is that you deserve a clean place to wait for your vehicle. So there's comfortable furniture and flat screen TVs and a clean kitchenette with a Keurig and clean restrooms and free Wi-Fi. And so if you want to go work, you can get work done while you wait for your carts at Shaw Bills. Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service, ShawBillsTire.com. Shaw Bills, we keep you rolling. So Andrew Marshan and Stuart Mandel over at The Athletic are reporting a group of college presidents are working with NFL executive Brian Rolap and, and others trying to form what is being called a, quote, Super League. Now, Marshan of The Athletic was on the Rich Eisen show and talked about um, the uh, this, this idea that's being thrown about right now. This is going to be an issue that people, college football fans and college athletic fans have to understand that is going to be with the sport over the next decade. And hopefully this is sort of a primer of like a definitive article of like what's ahead and not necessarily that this will happen, but I do think some of these ideas could survive. I don't know if this group will win out, but I do think that this is happening. It's just how and when and timetables that we don't know, but, but all this stuff in there, it's going to happen. Maybe not the super league, but there is going to be a change in terms of how players are compensated which we've already seen, but more official. And there's going to be decisions that have to be made. And I do think that the university presidents from West Virginia, from Syracuse, do have a very good point to say you want to be out, out in front of the issue to try to create a system that works. Just for the uh, some of the the structure, this, uh, this Super League that's being discussed, and again, this is being discussed and talked about on the record by university officials. Uh, what is being proposed or discussed is a Super League that would have 70 fixed teams and 10 that would be subject to relegation and promotion from the remaining 60 schools. There would be eight 10-team divisions with the division winners and eight wild cards qualifying for a 16-team playoff. The idea would be to embrace a unionized workforce essentially giving you professional football, which we, of course, already have. This would just provide structure to it. Um, man, one college football with no conferences and a designated set of the best teams all playing each other. Who could have possibly told you that might be a thing at some point in the future? Y'all... I know nobody likes hearing anybody say, I told you so. I've literally been saying this for a decade. Since that first big round of realignment back in 2011, 
that saw A&M and Missouri come into the SEC when the entire structure and foundation of college football was shaken. This has been so obvious. A lot of people didn't want to hear it at the time, but now it's becoming something that everybody is acknowledging is going to happen. It's just a matter of how it looks. And the two school presidents that spoke on the record, one of them is Syracuse Chancellor Kent Syervood, who said, quote, the current model for governing and managing college football at, or college athletics is dead. He went on to say, I really think conferences in the NCAA are at a very significant likelihood of going bankrupt in the near future because of the lawsuits, both the ones that are going to trial and the ones that will follow. West Virginia president, E. Gordon Gee, longtime favorite of this show. Those bow ties. He told The Athletic, quote, we are in an existential crisis. These are administrators speaking on the record. Remember, it is the college administrators that ultimately make the decisions on things like this. The college presidents and chancellors of their specific leagues are going to be the ones that make these decisions. They're telling you it's dead. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know if the current TV contract survives. One thing we've seen is you just signed a TV deal for a 12-team playoff. They're already looking to go to 14 or 16. So all of this stuff is written in sand, but it's where we're heading undeniable. I've, I've, I've had firsthand conversations with athletic administrators that have told me they are preparing for the, for the not the, the probability or the possibility, but for the inevitability of revenue sharing with their college athletes. Like, this is happening, and it's going to happen. Like There will be a day where there is no SEC, Big Ten, ACC. They're not signing their own. There's not an SEC TV deal and an ACC. It's going to be college football. The 50, 60, 70, invite only, or whoever can afford to be part of the group. They're all going to play each other. You're not going to ever see LSU against Grambling or LSU against Nichols or LSU against South Alabama in Tiger Stadium on the third Saturday in November. You're never going to see it again. You're going to see games with the best teams, best programs that people want to see and a really legitimately true playoff. That's where we're headed, and it's going to be awesome when we get there. Y'all just keep rowing with me, man. We'll get there, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, it's after further review. Quick break, come back, wrap up hour number one next. AFR. We're brought to you by Glow Resources. G L O Glow Resources.com. Glow Resources.com. Complete employer solutions. And I always am very cautious and careful to make sure I say that uh, clearly. They're complete employer solutions. So if you own a business and you're looking to hire, Glow Resources wants to deal with you. They're not a temp staffing agency, they want to talk to you, the business owner. And listen, they score themselves on how long their employees stay with their customers. This isn't a temp solution. They're providing you long-term solutions for blue-collar and white-collar workers. And they take care of everything. Workers' comp, child support, deductions, health insurance, dental insurance, general liability. People might even live or work in a certain market but have operations all over the, the country or the world. Glow Resources can help with that as well. Visit them online at GlowResources.com. G-L-O, GlowResources.com. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com.
There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is... After further review with Matt Moscona. Uh, Kendall Rogers in 10 minutes from right now, uh, 12 minutes from right now. The Saints have added some, some linebacker depth. Uh, they signed free agent Kalecki Hudson to a one-year deal. Uh, it's courtesy of Mike Garofola at, uh, at NFL Media. Hudson's 26 years old, just finished his rookie contract with Washington. He was a, um, uh, a fifth-round draft pick back in 2020, so he played his four-year rookie deal. It's free agent. Had a free agent visit with, um, with the Steelers, but ultimately chose to sign with the New Orleans Saints. There's a couple of things I love about this. Not only is Kalecki Hudson, has he been a, a, a good reserve linebacker, he, um, he played 35% of the defensive snaps for Washington a year ago, but really where he excelled was on special teams. So he, he played on 73% of the team's defensive snaps last year. So I, um, I always like adding depth at linebacker, especially when that player has special teams value. This is something that I think every NFL fan knows, but the way you make a roster, if you're not a starter, is by being valuable on special teams. Because when you have a 53-man roster, for those players that are active on game day, everybody plays. Everybody plays. Even if you're a backup offensive lineman, you're going to play on on the kicking units, likely, as an extra blocker on field goals and PATs. Like every, If you're the backup quarterback, you're probably the holder um, you know, on field goals, PATs. So everybody is going to play, and that's how you create immense value for yourself. Um, when I look at linebacker from a year ago, of course you had Demario Davis, Pete Werner. After that, though, you, you, your two starters, it was Zach Bond, Nephi Sewell, DeMarco Jackson, Ty Summers. Like Those are the linebackers that recorded statistics for you a year ago. So you had six, six linebackers that recorded statistics. Your two starters that I mentioned, Davis, Werner, and then Bond, Sewell, DeMarco Jackson, Ty Summers. So when you look at this year, who you have under contract, you've got Davis and Werner back, but you've already added Willie Gay. So Willie Gay as a number three is already an upgrade at linebacker over what you had last year when Zach Bond really was your number three. Sewell and Jackson are um, potentially back. Jackson, it was a draft pick, so he's back. But Sewell is... um, Nephi, forgive me, Nephi Sewell's back as well. Um, and DeMarco Jackson are back. Ty Summers and Andrew Dowell are both free agents. So Summers was the other guy that played for you a year ago. And remember, Dowell was going to make the team and then tore his ACL uh, at the end of training camp. And so he was on IR all of last year. So Summers and Dowell are both free agents and Bonds in Philly. So, you know, two of the players... One of the players for certain that you played a year ago, Bond, is already gone. Two of them, Dowell and Summers, 
are are free agents and are are unsigned right now. And now you've added Gay and Hudson. So maybe Kalecki Hudson is coming to New Orleans to try to win a job in camp, but it sure feels like he's probably your fourth best player after Davis, Werner, and Willie Gay. You know, I look at this group, if you're going to keep you know, six linebackers or play six linebackers, however you can have them either on active roster or on the on the practice squad, like you know three are set, right? You know Davis and Warner and Gay are all going to make the team. And you probably have a lean on Nephi Sewell and DeMarco Jackson making the team as well because they did last year and they, they played well, played special teams for you. So what it comes down to is that role that Ty Summers played. We have Ty Summers, you have Andrew Dowell coming off of injury, and then you have Kalecki Hudson. Which guy might might win that last linebacker spot for you? Well, Summers is 28 years old. Dowell is 27 years old, coming off an injury. And Hudson's 26 years old, just finished his rookie contract. So you have the youngest of the three who's been a healthy player, unlike Dowell, who's coming off of injury. If nothing else, what you've done is that a young veteran who's got experience both as a starter, he started a dozen games in his career, and as a, a, a reserve and a special teamer, to your roster for training camp to compete for one of those linebacker spots. You say it all the time. In the NFL, you're never staying the same. You're getting better, you're getting worse. If Kalecki Hudson wins the job, you got better. If not, you know that you're solid with the guys that you have. Be interesting to see if the Saints choose to bring back Ty Summers or Andrew Dow, both free agents, bring them back, you know, sign them to, to deals for camp, see if they can go compete and win a job, or if Kalecki Hudson, uh, they sign him with the idea that he is going to win one of these uh, these jobs for the New Orleans Saints. All right, it's after further review. Sports Center's coming up. Get you caught up on national headlines. Uh, Kendall Rogers, George is next here on AFR. AFR. If you're thinking of buying land, your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. Go to firstsouthland.com, firstsouthland.com. If you're trying to buy that recreational property, maybe, you know, with uh, with deer season being over now and you're just tired of sharing that lease with other people, you want your own hunting property, First South Farm Credit can make it happen. Maybe you live in Louisiana, but you want to buy a property in Mississippi or Texas. They can do that. First South Farm Credit can help you buy land anywhere in the contiguous 48. So you want to buy you want to buy a ranch in Idaho? First South Farm Credit can help you do it. You want to buy farmland in Louisiana? First South Farm Credit can help you do it. They can even help you finance your farm equipment. Maybe you just want you know, 20 acres in, in Zachary or St. Francisville or Holden uh, to build your, your family's dream home. First South Farm Credit. Go to firstsouthland.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. And looking forward to 50 more. 
Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. I'm Christine Lisi. The season is over for Knicks All-NBA forward Julius Randle. He'll undergo season-ending surgery on his dislocated right shoulder after rehabbing the last two months. It is a significant blow for a New York team fifth in the East, only a game out of third. But it's not all doom and gloom, believes ESPN NBA insider Brian Windhorst. While Randle's loss is hurtful, with these other teams in the East all having issues, the Cavs and Donovan Mitchell having issues with his knee. Miami has been up and down throughout the year. Milwaukee is a suspect even at the best of times. The Knicks can still make something happen here. They, you know, if they end up with the Cavs in the first round, they've owned the Cavs the last couple of years. NFL is part of their blockbuster trade to acquire receiver Stephon Diggs from the Bills. The Texans wiped out the final three years on his contract so he can become a free agent after this season, and Houston anticipates getting the very best of Diggs. Eagles and left tackle Jordan Maialata agreed on a three-year $66 million extension. USC hired Ar Arkansas's Eric Musselman as its next men's basketball coach. He replaces Andy Enfield, now at SMU. You. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy, coming up Friday. Apparently, everyone's upset with my Aaron Rodgers take. I'll tell you why I'm not backing off it. It's unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour three, off we go. Nope. Hour two. Oh. Slow down, son. Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neal. They're chanting Paul O'Neal's name. Soup. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Uh, could the Saints be targeting an SEC cornerback? in this upcoming draft. Uh, interesting opinion. We'll get to that in about 15 minutes. Uh, Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball, good enough to join us, uh, as he is always during baseball season. Talk a little college baseball. How are you, dude? He dropped. Okay, we'll see if we can reconnect there with, uh, with Kendall. Got Kendall Rogers with us. Um, giant weekend. Uh, for LSU, I think it goes without saying. Tigers are two and seven in conference play, taking on Vanderbilt, which is um, a Vandy team that uh, is at six and three in the league. 
And it's a team that, oddly, LSU has had some success against. Uh, it, I, I shouldn't say oddly because, obviously, LSU's program has had a lot of success against a lot of teams. But um, you know, Jay and LSU, and probably a couple of years ago, went on the road to Vanderbilt. Had a really nice weekend at the end of the season. They were making a push toward uh, toward postseason play. Okay, we got Kendall with us now. How are you, man? Uh, I am doing well. I was going to say, uh, you know, my son is a huge C.J. Stroud and Texans fan, and, and he's talking about this thing called the Super Bowl and the Texans. So that, that other than answering questions about LSU baseball today, that's been the other thing I'm answering a ton of questions about is my son <laughs> and uh, Stephon Diggs. <laughs> I guess it's a pretty good time to be a Texans fan. Uh, not exactly. Imagine saying that five years ago. I know. Um not ex- <laughs> not exactly for LSU baseball today. Uh, two and yeah. seven in the league, man. Um, how improbable is this start? Uh, it, it's not great. And here's my thing: when you look at LSU right now, and uh, trust me, like I, I've known Jay forever, I think he's an awesome coach. But I, I, any time that you have to come out in the media and talk about how, you know, maybe we don't need phones around the locker room, that just screams clubhouse issues to me uh, maybe that isn't the case but i just that that always that's a red flag like that's a huge red flag so i don't know if that's his way of just kind of rallying the troops so to speak i think we'll find out starting tonight against grayson carter but uh it, at any rate things aren't great and when you look at lsu overall it, it's very like you know this lsu team it's not like you're looking at them and going hey i don't know what our problem is you know like it's not like they're losing one run games like we know what the problem is they're Next to last, the conference and offense right now. Uh, they're you know fourth from the bottom in, co- in the in the conference and staff ERA. So the problem with this team is they just need to be consistent. Like one night the offense is good, the, the pitching is terrible. Uh, the next night the pitching is great, the offense is terrible. So there needs to be an element of consistency with this team. Until that happens, they're going to continue to struggle. That doesn't mean they're going to be you know they're going to continue to be two and seven, but they're going to continue to be very consistent from week in and week out. Um, this sort of goes without saying, but I'll ask you just for context. How important do you think this weekend is for LSU with Vandy coming in? Uh, I, I think it honestly could be the season. I mean, I, I, and, and I, I know that sounds very dramatic for you know the mid the midway point in the season. But here's the thing: if you lose this series this weekend, you're sitting there at what three and nine, and guess what? You got to go to Tennessee next week. And if there's one person who would love to put LSU in, a, in in the coffin, it's Tony Vitello. So I just don't think you want to be in a position where you have to go to Knoxville and pretty much a must-win series. If they don't win the series this weekend, they have got to win the, the Tennessee series. Uh, if you lose that, then you're just uh, unbelievable trouble. So I think it's a big series at home. But I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, when I, when I look at this LSU club as a whole, like coming into the season, you and I talked about this, you know, we thought Paxton Clean would be the X factor. We thought Jake Brown would make an instant impact. Well, Jake Brown has been, you know, hurt off and on, and Paxton Kling has done the opposite of making a huge impact. So you put those two things together, combined with everything else, and the result has not been very good. Um, how do you think Luke Holman fares tonight against Vanderbilt's offense? I think pretty well, because the thing about Vanderbilt, if you break down their numbers, and what's funny is the one weekend I saw them, they were actually pretty powerful. I mean, Alan Espinal was off the charts good power-wise the weekend I saw them. But if you look at their offensive numbers, especially from a power standpoint in conference, they're not overwhelming. I want to say they have three or four home runs as a team in the SEC play so far. So, you know, he's not a guy they're, – they're, or, you know, they're not, he's not a guy and they're not a team that's going to wear LSU out with home runs. I mean, knock on wood, I guess. But that, that's not their MO, right? Like, their MO is – you know, Espinal getting hit, uh, R.J. Austin creating things with his versatility offensively. So I think the biggest thing is just not allowing Vanderbilt to get in a groove because they're not going to score runs in bunches, but if you let them get in a groove, if you give them second chances, uh, they're going to kill you. If, you. if you flip it and you look at LSU offensively, which, as we've talked about, Kendall, they're, they're, they're second to last in the league right now in offense and uh, team batting average in conference games. What? Why should I believe that LSU could get it going this weekend against Vandy's pitching staff? Well, I think if you're going to get them, I think your best chance is tonight against Grayson Carter. I mean, Bryce Cunningham is one of the 
the the better breakout prospects in this league this year. He's up to 96. You'll see him later this week. I mean, he's up to 96. They're pretty good off-speed stuff. Carter Holton has been very good, has a very good off-speed p- uh, pitch. You know, Grayson Carter tonight might actually kind of be the elixir they need. And, you know, he's a guy that's going to sit 98 to 100, uh, touching 101, 102 on the radar gun. But he throws a lot of fastballs. And his his command has been very good this year, which is kind of interesting because that was what he struggled with last year. So I think the one thing if you're LSU is, is make him throw strikes. And if LSU's hunting fastballs, uh, they might actually have a lot of success tonight against him. Now, they haven't had a lot of success offensively against many guys lately, but maybe he's kind of what the doctor orders. Maybe that's what they need is a power guy at the box in kind of a must-win situation. I think it certainly is that uh, for LSU for all the reasons you said. Kendall Rogers is with us, D1 Baseball on Twitter, at Kendall Rogers. Give him a follow. Uh, Kendall, it's not just uh, LSU and uh, and Vandy tonight. Arkansas is going to be back at it again on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday yeah. series. They're going to take on Ole Miss up there in Fayetteville. Um, is Do you see any weaknesses there with that Arkansas team? Uh, the, the only weakness I would say is like somebody asked me this the other day, like compare Arkansas and A and M. And you know the thing about Arkansas is as much as I love the rotation, as much as I love the bullpen, Will McIntyre, I like some of the pieces offensively. I think that the thing about Arkansas that makes them effective offensively is they know who they are. They don't have a, just a lineup full of superstars. They don't have a Brady Montgomery or a Tommy White. But what they do, they know who they are, and they're well, kind of a well-oiled machine. But with that said. I think the fact that their offense is not loaded with star power is the one thing for me that I look at Arkansas and I go, okay, when I get to regional and super, if they can get a team that can match them on the mound, uh, I think they can be beaten. So I think that's the one thing for me that I look at with Arkansas that as the season progresses is can they have guys emerge? And maybe Peyton Stovall, the Louisiana native, is that kid. But do they have somebody that can emerge as like a, a big-time, like, you know, 350, big-time power hitter type? Let's talk about a couple of the other series too, Kendall. Uh, Bama's at Kentucky. I think it's fair to say two surprise teams. I mean, a first-year coach there in Tuscaloosa and then Kentucky, they just keep acing every test. Uh, I feel silly asking it this way, but how real is Kentucky? The thing about Kentucky, and it's kind of funny you asked that right after Arkansas, the thing about Kentucky, I saw them earlier this year in Round Rock, and that is the classic baseball team that knows exactly who they are. Uh, they're not again. They're not going to be flashy, but what they are, they're very good up the middle of the Millie and Petre and Grant Smith, as you guys saw in the in the Super last year. Uh, they've got a nice piece in Mitchell Daly, the tra- Texas transfer at third. Devin Burks is behind, you know, back behind the plate. Um, you know, they've got Ryan Walshman in the outfield. You know, the rotation is solid. So again, they don't have a single guy on that team pro- that, that's probably even going to make All SEC, but they're all really good players. And by the way, they all have a lot of experience. A lot of those guys are on the same team. They were in a super regional, and that really matters in college baseball. What about Bama? Yeah, you know, the thing about Bama is they have one of the better young players in the conference than Justin LeBron up the middle. Um, you know, I like Ben Hess, the power arm in the front of their rotation, but, you know, Rob Vaughn's done a great job. You know, that was not an easy situation. You're you're taking over for a guy that, you know, got run off or betting. Uh, they don't select Jason Jackson as their head coach, so, that, you know, it would be natural for there to be some awkwardness between him and Jason but, man, it's, it's worked out great, and I, I think you're just kind of seeing just how good of a coach he is. But, I mean, do I think Bama's good? Yeah. Do I think they're a regional host in the year? Probably not. Okay. That's interesting for a team that's, that's ranked in the top 20 right now. A couple more for you. I guess the other maybe premier series would, would be A&M at South Carolina this weekend. Um, yeah. I guess the only time I've really paid a lot of attention this season, Kendall, South Carolina is when they swept Vanderbilt. So, uh what what's an expectation for the Gamecocks this weekend at ho- at home uh, with Jim Slosnagel's crew coming in? Yeah, you know South Carolina is a tough team to get a handle on because you're you're right they did sweep uh, Vanderbilt, but I mean if you go back and look at how those games unfolded, Vanderbilt was just awful that weekend. Uh, I think I want to say weather was not great as well, so it was a weird weekend. But you know they've got a nice you know front of the rotation with you know Tyler Pitzer and Eli Jones. Uh, they're going to have their hands full. Um, you know, A and M's really, really good offensively. They kind of, you know, they, their rotation is good. It's not great. Their bullpen has one of the best relievers in the country, Devin Ashen back. So, I, I think it's their toughest test to date, and I'm very curious to see how they do. Um, I, I, I tend to like A and M two out of three in that one, but uh, South Carolina certainly has proven they can be some teams at home. How how good 
is a and I mean, are they College World Series yeah. championship good this year? Well, I mean, let's see how they do against the tougher teams on their schedule. Uh, you know, they, they lost the Florida Series in Gainesville. Um, the, the game they lost in the series finale, they left like 11 guys or runners, or 11 runners in scoring position. So it was kind of a weird, you know, like, uh, you know, Florida's just finding ways to win series, right? So, I mean, no harm, no foul there. But the thing about them, man, is they're, they're really, really good in the top six of their lineup. Uh, Braden Montgomery sizzling hot. Of course, the, the most coveted portal guy uh, over the summer. Jace Lavalette has been really good. Gavin Grahovic, a, a freshman that we kind of talked about in the same vein as Jake Brown coming into the year. He's been really good for them. I think the biggest question mark with me when it comes to A&M uh, is just their starting rotation. You know, Ryan Prager has put up great numbers, but the stuff isn't overwhelming. You know, Tanner Jones is the biggest power arm they have. He's up to 97, 98 last week. But again, you know, how, how will he do against the better teams in their schedule? Uh, they look the part right now. Let's see if they look the part in, in May and June. Uh, teams can look a lot different. And the same kind of goes for LSU, by the way. They, mm. This could be a totally, totally different-looking team in a couple of months, and it does now. Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball, on Twitter at Kendall Rogers. Y'all give him a follow. Great stuff as always, man. We appreciate the time. Thank you. You got it, pal. Have a good weekend. See you. And no Todd Peterson drop. Ted Peterson. Surprised. See, Kendall's just waiting for it. That's his thing. He's lying in wait. He doesn't want to abuse it. Just, you know, he'll catch you when you least expect it, Muse. That's what's going to happen there with Kendall. I'm trying to stay ready. I understand. All right, it's after further review. We're not got a quick break. Um, interesting mock draft today had the Saints taken a cornerback in round two. Uh, I'm not sure I love the player or the position in round two, but I want to talk about it next. It's AFR. AFR. Get Gordon and get it done. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. You know what to do. You've been injured in an accident. It's not your fault. Do what injured people in our state have done for three decades. Go to getgordon.com, getgordon.com. Of course, Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited to tell you about here over the uh, the coming weeks is how Gordon and his ways that he gives back to the community uh, the Gordon Gives Initiative are giving away uh, laptops to, uh, to to graduates. So if you're graduating high school and you're going to college or trade school, uh, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys wants to give you the opportunity to win a laptop. So go to getgordon.com, getgordon.com. You can pull up any of their social media channels at getgordon. Go to at getgordon on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, Instagram, all the places. You'll see the um, uh, the Gordon Gives Initiative how you can win a laptop, how you can enter. You can learn more right there. Again, go to gordongives.com. You know what to do. Get Gordon and get it done. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com.
Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and After further review with Matt Moscona. If you're just joining us, a couple of big stories today. Eric Musselman leaving Arkansas. He is headed to uh, USC. He'll be the new coach at Southern Cal. I got a text uh, on the show, on the, uh, show text line from Sean who said, is Will Wade going to end up at Arkansas? Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know what Arkansas's target will be. Um, I do believe that Will Wade... Uh, if not this year, next, is going to end up back in the Power Five or, I guess, in basketball, the Power Six, one one of the Power Leagues, Um, and rightfully so. I mean, the only reason he isn't, the only reason he was fired at LSU was because (laughs) the the nefarious activity with which he took place or he participated is all now legal. So he's a guy that can clearly coach – attention to detail, knows how to generate excitement and uh, solicit donors, uh, solicit from donors. Yeah, I mean, I think Will Wade is going to be back at a in a major college basketball job, if not in this hiring cycle, next year. So from McNeese's standpoint, um, I think they would love to get one more year out of Will Wade. I, I think they're, even with offering Will Wade the contract extension, uh, or him signing the contract extension, I think they they understand that that was just expressing their commitment and appreciation and wanting to show him that they want him to stay. And of course they do. But realistically, you understand that when you're at a school that doesn't have those resources and you have a coach like that, it's not going to be a long-term solution if he wins. So you hope that he comes in, makes you better, elevates your program, makes your job more desirable for the next guy, puts you in a, in a better place than you were. And he's al- he's already done that. I mean, he brought him to the NCAA tournament this year. I think they'd love to get one more year out of Will Wade. So I I don't know if Will Wade will be on the short list for Arkansas. It, it just I mean Eric Musselman, USC announced formally that they had hired Musselman thirty minutes before we came on air. So I think that's all still very new. Um, the other is Haley Van Lith for the, for those that missed it. A uh, Haley Van Lith not going pro, but she is entering the transfer portal. So, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for what Haley Van Lith did this year. And I've told this before, and if you were with us that day, you'll remember it. But you know, it was one of those Fridays where Terrio was here before the season. We had Kim Mulkey on the show. And, you know, Kim, in the way she does, says, Ryan, are we going to score the ball now? And she's right. I mean, you're second in the country to Iowa in scoring offense. She averaged about 85 a game. They were awesome. They had a ton of scorers. She, said, she just didn't know who was going to run the point because you didn't, you know, Alexis Morris graduated. You didn't have a natural point guard. So Haley Van Lith took one for the team, man. I mean, for all the criticism that some LSU fans gave her, it was unwarranted because she's a she's a two guard. She's a shooting guard. She was one of the top scorers in the country a year ago at Louisville. And she came here to do that. But LSU didn't have a true point guard. So Haley learned, did the best she could. She switched positions in her senior year at a new school. So I respect that tremendously, the job she did. So in entering the portal, my guess is, and I don't have any inside information, I'm just I'm just telling you I respect the fact that she was in her senior year willing to switch positions to help the team. My guess is she's trying to go somewhere where she's going to score. I mean, go, 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 to, go to Iowa and replace Caitlin Clark. I mean, that might be what she does. You know, just where you, you have a, uh, a forever 
you have forever rain, just forever green light. Go, shoot. Uh, my guess is that's probably what's going to happen there with Haley Van Lith. So anyway, Eric Musselman out at Arkansas. He's heading to USC, and Haley Van Lith hitting the transfer portal. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're hanging out with us here. Man, I got to hang out last night at the Pels game with uh, with Sean McMullen, uh, my buddy from Michelle. Of course, Sean McMullen, former LSU baseball player. Um, his dad, Joel, is present CEO at Michelle. Sean has joined the family business now. Uh, great uh, rep, services a lot of different accounts. Got to hang out um, with Sean last night at the basketball game. Sean and his wife, Savannah, it was great that they, that they came in. It's good to sit down and chat for a bit. And look, I tell you all the time, man, it's one of the great things about Michelle. 76 years, 30 offices, 11 states, servicing companies from sea to shining sea. But they still do business face to face, handshake and a smile. Like they'll come to you. It's it's the principles upon which they've been built. It's awesome, and I just respect it so much. If you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products you use to weigh and measure. So if you're in a plant, if you're a farmer, whatever. I mean, the at the airport. I tell you all the time. You go to the airport, you see the the luggage scale where you put your luggage where they weigh it. You look to the side, you see a little Michelle sticker right there on the side of the scale. It's Michelle weighing and measurement. Michelle.com. Michelle.com. Uh, Field Yates over at ESPN has a new mock draft out, and it's a it's a two round mock draft. And I think like there's some things that every time I look at one of these mock drafts now, I'm looking for. And I think listen, it's obvious. I say this all the time. I say it again. I I don't care what Field Yates or Mel Kiper or anybody necessarily predicts. You know, in their mock draft, a mock draft is what it is. It's more just to see. Like who you think is available, who might be available in certain spots, and what position maybe a team might be targeting in a certain spot. And I think that's what's interesting because a lot of these guys that cover the NFL nationally are uh, are are plugged in to to these different organizations, and they talk not only to scouts but front office people. They may have a good idea of what these teams are are looking for. So Field Yates has Jaden Daniels going number two. He's got Malik Neighbors going six to the Giants. Um, when you look at the LSU guys. But it really starts to matter uh, for the Saints at, at 14. And the thing that for me is most interesting is Field Yates does have uh, the first three players in this draft being taken quarterbacks. He's got Williams, Daniels, May going one, two, three. Then he's got Marvin Harrison Jr. going four. And J.J. McCarthy going five to Minnesota. Uh, so he's mocking a trade there with the uh with the Vikings going up the five with the Chargers. Remember, Chargers now coached by Jim Harbaugh, but he's got McCarthy going five to the Vikings and then neighbor six. Um, I saw this quote earlier today from Jim Harbaugh, and it was at the team's website there at, with the Chargers. He said that uh, this is a quote, Jim Harbaugh. There's talk of four quarterbacks going in the first four picks. If that happens, then that pick, their their number five pick really becomes like the number one pick in the draft. And I I like the way he worded it because it's a better way of saying what I've been saying for a while. Why I want the Saints to sit at 14 is because if you have the first four picks in the draft that are quarterbacks or five quarterbacks come off the board before the Saints pick, essentially that's great value for the Saints. But if in effect, it's true. If you're not, if you're a team that doesn't need a quarterback, and the first four picks off the board are quarterbacks, then really it's like the draft starting at number five. So while the Saints have the 14th pick, it's really like if four quarterbacks come off the board before the Saints pick, or maybe even five, depending on if Bo Nix um, ends up going to Denver, as a lot of people are projecting at 12, then the Saints' 14th pick is really like either the ninth or the 10th pick in the draft because you're not picking a quarterback with your first-round pick. So really you just got to get through eight or nine other players that non-quarterbacks to get to your pick at 14, which feels like you're going to have amazing value there. And you're starting to see this more and more, and you know I'm thrilled about it because this is the player I want the Saints to take. And Field Yates has the Saints taking Olu Fashanu out of Penn State at 14. We've talked about it a million times. I think the Saints have to go offensive tackle at 14. And Fashanu is the guy that I think is most likely going to be there. He, in any other year, could be the first Offensive tackle off the board, but in a year like this, with so many quarterbacks, with Joe Walt on the board as well, J.C. Latham, some other really good players, there's a likelihood that you're going to see a player, a really good player, fall, air quotes, fall, 
uh, to 14, a player that in another year might be a top 10 pick first offensive lineman off the board. Same conversation we're having with Brian Thomas. In another year, he might be the first receiver off the board. He's just in a draft class where you've got Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, and even though Brian Thomas is this tantalizing talent, you know, he would have been the first receiver off the board last year if he were in that draft. But he's a guy that you love. And you know, I think the same is true for Fashanu. But for me in this mock draft, the thing that was more interesting was what Field Yates did with the Saints at 45. That's the pick they have from Denver. And he had the Saints going with Kamari Lasseter, the cornerback out of Georgia. And he writes, the Saints restructured Marshawn Lattimore's contract late last season, fueling speculation that he could be a trade candidate this offseason. Lasseter would add depth there if such a move happened. He's sudden, confident, and capable in man coverage. Okay. Um, it would be hard for me to sit here and definitively tell you that I would hate the Saints adding a defensive player from the University of Georgia, but I would hate the Saints adding this defensive player from the University of Georgia at 45. And part of it's because of Lasseter and part of it's because of the position. First of all, if the Saints don't trade Lattimore and you've got Paulson and Debo back in a contract year and Alante Taylor in year three, if all three of those guys are back, using the 45th pick on a cornerback doesn't make a lot of sense. You have so many needs on this team. And as I kind of like map out positions of need for New Orleans, I put offensive tackle number one. I have wide receiver number two because you only got two of them. And we can talk all we want about A.T. Perry and some of the younger guys, but the bottom line is you got two receivers. You got Alave and Shahid, that's it. That you know you can count on. Michael Thomas is gone. You got to add receivers. So, Tackle one, wide receiver two. I'm putting safety at three because no matter how much you love Jonathan Abram and Jordan uh, Jordan Howden, you haven't replaced Marcus May. Maybe those guys can play, but you still need another safety. I'd put defensive line four, probably defend, interior defensive line more so. Uh, you, you, you like Saunders and Shepard and Brzee, but if you, if you can find someone you feel is a dominant interior player, I'd love that at, at 45. Then I'd go tight end, mainly because you got three of them, but... If, they're, if the right player is there, I'm with it. And then I'd put cornerback six. And I, I think what's, you know, a year ago when we were looking at all these mock drafts for the Saints, I think a lot of us assumed, and look, Brian Brzee was a guy that a lot of a lot of people mocked to the Saints in round one a year ago, and they ended up taking him. But everyone that talked about the Saints last year before the draft knew running back was a spot they had to address. Kamara had been injured. We knew the contract situation. They added Jamal Williams, but you really felt like he needed a younger long-term option at running back. And they got it with Kendra Miller in round two. Like, we knew that was something they were going to target, and they ended up adding Kendra Miller out of TCU. So I look at it this year, and I go, receiver feels like that position this year. Receiver feels like the position you got to target in round two because you're going to go very likely offensive line in round one. Receiver's your next biggest need. It's a super deep position receiver draft, you should have some insanely talented value at 45 at the receiver position. So number one, I don't love taking a corner, but the idea of taking a cornerback in round round two. The other thing is, I don't love Kamari Lasseter. Lasseter, at his pro day, ran a 40 that was clocked as low as 4.63. Now, there were it was a variety of times from the 4.5s to as low as 4.63, but either way, that ain't what I want from a 5'11 cornerback. I don't want a 5'11 cornerback that runs 4'6". In the NFL, no thanks. You certainly aren't playing on an island if you're 5'11 running a 4'6", 4'6'3", in the NFL in 2024. At best, you're a slot corner. And that's where you've got Elante Taylor. Now, Taylor wasn't great last year, but I still think Elante Taylor's got a lot of dog in him. And you use the second round pick on Alante Taylor. So the only way that I could think that it would even make sense at all to draft a cornerback, last or not, in round two, is if one of the three guys, Lattimore, Debo, Taylor, aren't on your roster. And it sure seems like all three of them are going to be on your roster this year. I'm not saying you don't draft a cornerback anywhere in this draft or find help there. But you have so many needs on this team. Corner. Depth that corner isn't one of them. Now, if you're not going to re-sign Paulson Adebo, which I think they will, or next year, 
you're not going to extend Alante Taylor, then address cornerback next year. It becomes a real pressing need next year. But this year, when you've got Lattimore, Adebo, and Alante Taylor, it's hard to justify saying, I'm going to use one of my top two picks on a position that isn't really a position of need when you have so many. So um, I don't love it. And if the Saints do go corner at 45, I'd be really disappointed. Uh, one other interesting note is that uh, Yates does have Mason Taylor, or excuse me, uh, Mason Smith from LSU going 60 to Buffalo. Mason Taylor! Wrong Mason. But you said it. I said it. But you I corrected myself. It. Wasn't talking about him. I'm talking about Mason Smith. Wasn't talking about Mason Taylor. I'm talking about Mason Smith. Mason Taylor! 60 overall, uh, round two. All right, it's after further review. Glad you're aboard with us here. Let me not get a break. We'll come back. Pels lose last night. I was there. Graf's probably never coming on the show again. We'll discuss. It's AFR. AFR. We're brought to you by the Watermark Hotel and the Renaissance Hotel. Two amazing hotel properties in Baton Rouge, the Watermark Downtown, the Renaissance Southtown. Remember, both properties can host your event. If it's the Watermark Downtown or the Renaissance Southtown right there on Blue Bonnet, the Watermark Baton Rouge's original high-rise building in downtown Baton Rouge, the old Louisiana National Bank building, a gorgeous property that has maintained so much of the historical uh, integrity of that building. When you walk in, like you go into the basement, there's still some of the old bank vault doors on there. Uh, they've kept a lot of the original art that was uh, sort of a uh, uh, e that was in the building. I mean, it's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, piece of, of Baton Rouge's history just to walk into. Go eat at the Gregory downtown. Um, if you want to go to Milford's on 3rd, that's a, a more casual sandwich shop, both accessed through the Watermark Hotel. It's a great spot in downtown Baton Rouge. Remember, it's free valet parking when you eat at the Gregory in downtown Baton Rouge at the Watermark Hotel. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SEA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation.
after further review with Matt Moscona. This is the Dreams Come True Radiothon Power Hour with a donation of at least $5 and ending in 45 cents. So $5.45, $12.45, you get the picture. In this hour of the Dreams Come True Radiothon, your name will be placed in a drawing for two VIP passes to the Zurich Classic for Sunday, April 28th. You can donate now at 1045ESPN.com. So is that just uh, for like another 22 minutes? This hour, 4 o'clock hour, yes. Why did you wait wait 38 minutes to read that one, Muse? Because when I flipped, uh, when I grabbed the promo, I saw it. That's why. I I, I didn't know. All right, we got to hurry then. So that's only in the 4 o'clock hour, Central Time. Yep. So you have 21 minutes left to do that. All right, so what do we do again? All right, so you go to 1045ESPN.com. Right, let's do it. I you know. donate at least $5. All right, so and first th- thing on the flipper. So if you go to 1045ESPN.com, first thing on the flipper, you'll see Dreams Come True Radiothon. There's the link. Okay, we're doing this. So you it, go to donate now. Yep. At least $5, and your donation has to end in 45 cents. So like... Five dollars and forty-five cents, twelve dollars and forty-five okay. cents, but it has to be at least five dollars. Paulie's, does your phone number, cell phone, end in a ten, one zero? Whose cell phone ends in one zero? I don't know. It's it's asking for like it's like two FA, and so it's like whoever has the one zero four five ESPN at gmail or something like that. On this, is what's logged in? So it's like it's sending a it's going to send a code to who? It's sending a code to someone whose cell phone ends in one zero. That's not you? Not me. Well, maybe that's Cade. Who is that? Let's see. Well, that could be like anybody in the building. Uh, no, it can't be anybody in the building because not everybody has that login. Um, Promotions. No, people. Cade ends in 05. <laughs> Whose number is this? Uh, I don't know. Does I want to log in? I'll have to do it for my phone or something. Like that. All right, so log on, donate. Just make sure your donation ends in like 45 cents. Yes. That's what you said? At least okay. $5, and it has to end in 45 cents. So give $5.45, $10.45, $100.45, $1,000.45. $1, Do that one. And then you're, you're entered to win. Uh, you're entered into a drawing to win VIP passes for Sunday at Zurich Classic. But you only have like 19 more minutes to do that because Muse waited 40 minutes to I, read that. I, I, I didn't, I'm didn't glad you got it. to it, Muse, because you see? know right about now is usually when it starts kicking. It's 441, you know what I mean? Normally, you might have forgotten, maybe you'd have seen double on the copy. That's what matters is that we got we got it in. Like, yeah. we, we did it. If tomorrow, Muse will read the Power Hour uh, promo at like 458. I don't know if we have a Power Hour tomorrow. I'm sure we do. We the should. first one this week. Uh... You didn't read the promo yesterday. I'm so going through all been, of them right here. There might have been one yesterday. It's the, the it, power it, it, it hour. wasn't. It's the first one this week. We got to get the power hour. Love Dreams come true hour. is awesome too. By the way, for we took Dreams come true is our um, our radio group's uh, collective philanthropic project. This is the, the you know there's so many great organizations. Uh, we try to help as many as we can, but you can't do everything. But the one that we that we do every year and have collectively done every year is Dreams Come True. And we always did a radiothon. And we, we um, several years back, decided to stop the traditional radiothon, you know, where you call in and make your pledge. Because everybody just does everything online now. And so we we do this now where it's like a month-long thing, and we promote uh, Dreams Come True and the, and the radiothon, all with online donations across all of our family of radio stations. So if you can't help, Dreams Come True is awesome. Uh, they they grant dreams for children with life threatening or terminal illnesses, and you know with um, we have great sponsors that are involved as well that uh, unlock sponsor donations when we hit certain levels throughout the the week and the month. So if you can be generous, I know everybody there's look there's so many great organizations and everybody asks for donations all the time, but this is something for for children in Louisiana. All the money stays in Louisiana. And it goes to Grant Dreams for uh, for kiddos that are fighting, you know, life threatening or terminal illnesses. You know, it could be uh, a Disney trip. You know, it could be a uh, a, a sports wish. There, there's so many there's so many varieties that they do. And Miss Becky and her staff do such an awesome job. And like all of the money stays local. And it's you know it, it's not like you know the, the money goes to run the organization. It's there. It's, it's a small staff, and and so so much of the money goes. Uh, to those dreams. So uh, hopefully you can help if you can. Uh, unfortunately, you just don't have a lot of time for the power hour because, you know, Muse waited 40 minutes to tell you about it. 
not necessarily true about how that happened, but okay. But you should still go donate. Did you not wait to? It's not that I. It's not that I waited. I I did not did you know wait, it was. Did you there. wait till thirty eight past the hour? To read a promo, yes. To yeah. read that specific one, when I grabbed them, I saw that. I'm like, yeah. oh, we need to do this. Did so read, I did. Did that. you read the promos before the show? No. Well, if you had read the promos before the show, you would have known that there was a power hour. Polly, is that? I mean, is that a factually accurate statement? That is. That is yeah. a fact. For you sure. read the promos before the show. I was promos got to read. I was doing other things before the show. All day. Actually, yes. Really? Yeah, you had no downtime whatsoever. Not read, very much. Read through the promos. I don't know. Walked in there earlier. Muse, you were standing in the hall listening to some song. I don't know. That wasn't happening. That did happen. I wasn't listening to a song. You were looking at something on your phone. Yeah. You, was, you were standing outside. How long were you standing outside the door before we walked in? Um, probably two minutes waiting for no, Hunt to finish that's up. That's factually inaccurate because I walked up five minutes before oh, you were here. Then about five minutes? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't time myself out there. Five minutes, couldn't write a promo? Uh, it's kind of a decompress moment there before coming now in and doing now these three sound hours like excuses. live. Now these sound like excuses. It's a legitimate reason. A decompress. Paul, you need to decompress before the show? No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm usually good. So. Yeah, usually good. All right. Maybe we'll see if Muse tomorrow can read the promos before the show. So if there's a power out, he'll give you more than now 16 minutes to go donate. Still plenty of time. The benefit of it is we've now talked about the power out for about six minutes. See? Look at this. <laughs> this is the benefit of... Uh, Excuse me. This is the benefit of of, uh, of Musa's shortcoming and not reading the promo before the show. I am losing my voice again. I didn't even yell about Alabama. I don't know what's <laughs> no, going on. Didn't. Why? Where's my voice going? This uh. is so weird. I feel fine. I'm just losing my voice. Does anybody have a problem with this? Where I'm curious if people have this problem where they just sort of randomly lose their voice. I'm like starting to randomly lose my voice very easily now. And it's concerning me because I talk for a living. I yeah. need my voice. You know, maybe some tea, some hot tea. I know maybe, that helps voices. Maybe, but it doesn't feel like it's just like a, uh, it, this doesn't feel like it's a symptomatic thing where it's like, oh, I was yelling. It's just like, it's just happening a lot. Well, I know, but maybe that can like help strengthen your voice a little bit more. I mean, you've been talking for a very long time. You would think talking would be good vocal exercises to strengthen your voice. Doesn't seem like it's working for me. It would wear it down a little bit, but yeah. Man, talked a lot last night. It was at the Pels game. Graf is never coming on this show again, right? Graf came into the suite at halftime. So yesterday I was at the Pels game. Big shout out to our friends at Action Industries. They hosted us in their suite for the Pelicans game. Uh, Graf told us yesterday that he did not want to come on the show because every time he comes on the show, they lose. We need to go do some research as well. Like, can you find the last however many times Graf has been on on a game day? I'm sure you can go into like our yeah. on demand and see the la- however many or in your text with him. I'm sure. Yeah. See the last times he was on and what the result was. But he says we lose every time. The Pels lose every time that um, that he comes on. And so then he he uh, he acquiesced. Came on yesterday. Pels still lost to the Magic. Uh, and it was a close game at half. It was two or three at half, I believe. I could look up the box score right now. And he came up to the suite. I was like, Graf, they're going to be fine. I promise it's going to be okay, man. We're going to pull it out. And then it just the third quarter was atrocious. Um, And then at the end of the game, three players got ejected. There was some ref with an attitude. I don't know what happened. It's one of the downsides of being at the game. You don't hear the commentary necessarily what's going on. But three players got ejected. Herb, Trey... Uh, who else got ejected at the end? It was Herb, Trey... I think Dyson. I think, I think it was. Dyson it was Dyson Daniels, Daniels, Daniels yeah. at the end. They uh, he, just, he just running them all. I mean, and they, it wasn't, there was nothing demonstrative. He was just... This ref just had an attitude and was running them all. Here was Willie Green after the game about the three ejections. Our frustration it boiled over, and uh, we have, we have to keep our composure. Look, I, I get it. Um, some calls aren't going our way. We feel like other teams are getting those calls, and our guys are frustrated about it, rightfully so. And I'm okay with battling, and you know, there's some times where guys get attacked here and there. But at the end of the game, we 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 have to keep our composure. Game's over, pretty much, and we, we got to take it. You know, we lost. We got to be able to take that sometimes. The frustration largely boiling over because, you know, you sucked last night. Let's just be honest and call it what it is. Orlando couldn't miss. You were crap defensively. Somebody tried to take out Zion's knees. That sucked, too. I'm just bummed, man. They got to turn this thing around. Because now you're... Look, now you've you've dropped below Phoenix into the play-in. 
You got six games to go. And I don't want to see this team in the play-in tournament. I mean, it's the goal we've all been targeting all year for this team is avoid the play-in, be in the postseason, be in a first-round series, and see if you can advance. It'd be a big step. And you've got a, a manageable schedule down the stretch. You've got to go finish. All right. Uh, we wasted most of this segment talking about Muso uh, screwing up the power hour read. So... I don't think it was a waste. We got a lot. We got a lot of people to go donate for dreams come true. Did that, we? I don't know if anybody's going to donate. I don't yeah, know if anybody's going to did. donate. I hope you do. People did. Uh, go donate to save Muse's job. Uh, Muse will do. <laughs> Muse will do Tigers in the pros next. AFR. We're brought to you by Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's.com. Rouse's.com. Love telling you about Rouse's. And remember, Rouse's still has crawfish. I know Easter's gone. A lot of us look at Easter and we go, "Well, crawfish is over." No, 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 no. no. At Rouse's, they've got crawfish live and boiled, so you can always get on by Rouse's and pick it up boiled fresh every single day, hot and fresh over at Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. And, of course, they always have their Rouse's daily or weekly specials as well, like Chobani. I love Chobani uh, Greek yogurt. It's so good. They have 10 of the little cups, the flavored cups, for only 10 bucks. That's a dollar a cup. That's like breakfast for a week right there. Uh, you could say 402 right now on Community Coffee, 12 count single serves or the 12 ounce bag, just 477. They always have great deals over at Rouse's. The official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints with 70 locations from Lake Charles to Orange Beach, Alabama, and points in between Rouse's.com. Rouse's, this feels like home. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard, or playing hard. Our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. The best...
after further review with Matt Moscona. All right, wrapping up hour two, Muso, Tigers, and the Pros. Tigers and the Pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. All right, we'll start with some NFL news. Per his agent, Lyle Collins is signing a one-year deal with the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Collins started 86 games in the previous seven seasons. That was with the Cowboys and the Cincinnati Bengals. According to Jordan Schultz, has a report that the deal, is, the one-year deal, I should say, is worth up to $6.25 million for Collins. Had at least one more suitor, but did choose the Buffalo Bills. So, good luck in Buffalo. Nas Reed, big night last night. Back-to-back 20-point mm. games. This one, 23 points off Should've of 8-15 shooting. Would have been 25. Oh, 60% from three last night for Would've Nas. Would have been 62. Would have been. Go, go along with uh, seven boards. Just awesome, man. I, I saw a stat earlier. He's an alien. I saw a stat earlier. The Timberwolves are 11-2 and two when Nas Reed starts this year. Wow. About that. And he, he's starting a lot right now because uh, Cat's out. Uh Further NBA action, Cam Thomas is just so friggin' good. Gosh. 27 points for Cam, 9 of 21. Filled it up at the free throw line as well. Four rebounds. I mean, he's it, it's just a, a generic 20-point stat line for Cam Thomas every single night. Uh, Alex Lang, his season's underway. Shut right, out Langer. inning. Shut out inning today. One walk and two punch outs. 18 pitches, 11 strikes. Real solid. And then Hunter Fiducia. He's our guy. He's our guy. For the Oklahoma City Ball Club, baseball clubs, what they're calling themselves now, one for three. (laughs) What? Solo Homer just absolutely leans on a (laughs) two-strike off-speed. And, uh, did they, uh, did the they go all Washington club. football they team? Did. They were the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City Dodgers. baseball club? Yeah, the Oklahoma City baseball club. <laughs> it's a Dodgers affiliate. That's Tigers in the pros. Whatever. All right, hour number three is coming ahead. Um, more of what Blake Baker had to say and uh, Sean Vazan talking some Saints. Stay here at Zaybar. AFR. Has anybody heard from Angel Reese yet? I'm putting out an all-PB for – or an APB, an all-PB. An all-person, but an APB. For Angel Reese. Got to get Angel Reese connected with Dr. Blake Williams. We're watching the Elite Eight. The Elite Eight slow down. We're watching the Elite Eight game the other night. And her, uh, her contact popped out. I'm going, man, got to get Angel Reese on the wall at the Williamson Eye Center with all the other great athletes that have had LASIK over at the Williamson Eye Center. Dr. Blake Williamson, he's the best. Told you last week, Dr. Blake was over in France um, working with a, a world renowned ophthalmologist there to bring a new practice back to Baton Rouge. There's a great story this week on uh, on the news on WBRZ that uh, Dr. Blake Williamson performed the first of its kind surgery in the world this week on a Baton Rouge man. It's a cataract, a new cataract procedure. I'm telling you, if you want the best, you go to the Williamson Eye Center. Just go for that free consultation. You want to ditch the contacts and glasses forever? Do what I did. You can trust Dr. Blake Williamson at the Williamson Eye Center. 924-2020 or WilliamsonEye.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Power up your next project with John Deere deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, Our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. 
learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I'm Christine Lisi. The Knicks will be without Julius Randle the remainder of the season. The All-NBA forward needs season-ending surgery on his dislocated right shoulder. He is expected to be ready around the start of next season. The Knicks fifth in the East, one game out of third. Bucks point guard Damian Lillard could return from a groin injury tomorrow night against the Raptors. Milwaukee trying to hold on to second in the East has lost four of five. And there are a couple of worrisome issues for the Bucks for ESPN NBA analyst Austin Rivers. They will go nowhere in these playoffs if they don't have their full roster and if they're not in full health. Uh, secondly, they have to get better on perimeter defense. We've seen them drop too many games now this late in the season where it is a cause for concern. You know, we, we need to see more consistency with them. The Texans, as part of their blockbuster trade to acquire receiver Stephon Diggs, wiped out the final three years on his contract, giving him the ability to become a free agent after this season. Eagles and left tackle Jordan Maialata agreed on a three-year, $66 million extension. USC's hired Arkansas's Eric Musselman as its next men's basketball coach. He takes over for Andy Enfield, now at SMU. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Looking for a career you'll love with flexibility, great pay and benefits, and one of the country's top workplaces? Come join their growing team. Go to Progressive.com slash careers and apply online today. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. Say it far, Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Two. And Mr. Toby Tumplay. Okay, we're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you're driving home with us. Sean Fazand in 15 minutes from right now. Uh, Sean um, from Fox 8 down in New Orleans. Did a seven-round mock. We'll talk some Saints needs, positions, targets, all that sort of stuff. Just a good convo, good uh, black and gold convo with Saints coming up uh, with Sean Fazan coming up in about fifteen minutes. I, I got you can always text the show in the two two five three nine six forty four hundred three nine six forty four hundred. Um, was talk, I was saying before we went to the top of the hour. I'm, I'm get, I find myself getting hoarse a lot more now, just easily, uh, and I'm not even yelling about. It, it really started with that Bama is burning thing. That's when it started, and I don't know if I've ever fully recovered. Carla Sharp said hoarseness can be caused by all the pollen in the air. That's I hope that's all it is. That makes sense. I mean, springtime. But like you said, I mean, the, the Bama thing was before spring. Yeah. 
Um, and then Garrett said, uh, you see that? Muse trying to offer you some herbal tea. Yeah, uh, it, it helps with voice care. That's a pretty known thing, I would say. But it does Panama red. I'm not, I'm not giving you that one. Nope. Mm-mm. Why don't you ask Denny who's been puffing <laughs> the magic dragon? Lil' Kim. Fat. The pH, pH fat. Yeah. pH fat. Blake Baker met with reporters on Thursday. Talked about a lot of stuff. So I was really interested when Blake Baker was talking about the secondary. Look, LSU's defense last year was atrocious. When you're 108th in the country, everything went wrong. Your interior defensive line didn't stop the run. You didn't rush the passer. Your linebackers didn't tackle. And your defensive backs didn't cover. You were just bad everywhere. So, you got a lot of places to improve. And... We've spent time talking about all of it. I don't know how much better the interior defensive line is going to be because I think it's incomplete. I'll continue to say this. They're going to add more players out of the portal. They've already added Gio Paez from Wisconsin. That's a guy you know that's coming in. And they're not done. They're going to add more out of the portal. You have to. You don't have enough bodies to play an SEC schedule on the defensive line right now. So you got to add more. Okay. We're all interested in Harold Perkins and how the linebacker thing is going to shape out. But man, LSU built its reputation for so many years as DBU, and it was so unsettling last year to watch LSU be so bad against the pass. To be so inept. And, you know, man, it was conflicting too because when you don't have the personnel to play man and LSU didn't have the personnel to play man, you play zone. But the problem with that is they could never get the zone defensive concepts down. And when you're not consistent enough to play zone and you're not talented enough to play man, you end up allowing 250 pass yards per game, which is what LSU did last year. So Blake Baker was asked, would he rather play man or zone? And the answer is pretty obvious, but how you get to that end is the real question. It's based off your personnel a little bit. If you got two guys that can you can put out there on an island, it makes your job a lot easier, in my opinion, as a, as a defensive coordinator. But I think it comes uh, comes down to who you have personnel wise, and then really trying to present the same picture to the quarterback and the offensive coordinator pre snap, and, and giving those guys you know an opportunity to to not have to sit there and you know because it can be exhausting from a physical you know physically taxing standpoint to sit there and play press man every every single snap. So again, if you were to cut me wide open, we want to play a lot of man, but I. I also know that we're going to do what's best for our guys back there as well. Yeah. When you got Derek Stingley and Christian Fulton, you got him, you got him. Break. When you got Elias Ricks and Dwight McLaughlin or Cordell Flott, hey, 25. You 6'3 guy with arms that like hang down past your knees. You go guard him. You got him. That's easy. You'd love that. That's what LSU had for more than a decade. But you go out last year and you're running Deuce Chestnut out there? You're running Zai Alexander out there? Which oh, I think coming back this year may play. Zai wasn't terrible last year. He got injured. And that was really unfortunate. But you're talking about a Southeastern transfer. That's not Derek Stingley. That's not Eli Ricks, the number one corner in the country coming from California. That's not what you built that secondary around. So, yeah, man, like, you had a whole bunch of dudes out of position last year. So, so much of that this year is how much better is your personnel and how much better coached are they to be able to play (laughs) in in their natural position. So, that was kind of what Blake Baker was talking about today when he's like, what you know, through spring, like, what have you seen so far in this development? He mentioned specific players and where they're playing them now. 
Now, I've seen some ups and downs. The one thing I'll say is we got guys that will attack the football. We've done a really, really good job on the back end creating turnovers, especially Sage Ryan sticks out to me. He, he's had several takeaways this spring. Major Burns has had a really good spring so far. I think the corners have probably grown more than any group from practice one to practice what are we in, 11, 12, somewhere like that? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but those corners have gotten much, much better, really as, as a unit. I think um, I think we have guys probably playing a little more in their natural position on the back end than, than maybe in the past. So I've been pleased with them. I, I think we got to continue to grow, and, and that would be you know the, the, the motto across summer uh, workouts and, and everything. But I do think we have some really good pieces to work with back there. I think we have good depth That's enough. Well. That's fine. No, that's fine. Guys playing in their natural positions. Guys playing in their natural positions. Who are the two guys by name Blake Baker just mentioned? Who are the two? The two guys he mentioned by name just now. Number one, Sage Ryan. Been really good at turnovers. Where are they playing Sage Ryan? Safety. Where were they playing Sage Ryan last year? Boundary corner. Brian Kelly sat here and told us, well, we think Sage Ryan's a really good tackler. He's a great athlete. That may be true. But you had Deuce Chestnut at corner. That was the problem. You had a short, squatty guy who couldn't cover anybody. So you took a guy, and then you had a bunch of freshmen. You took a guy who's a really good athlete and said, maybe he can cover. Oh, you mean you put Sage Ryan back at safety and he's creating turnovers? Yeah. It's his more natural position. Who's the other guy he mentioned? By name. Major Burns. Whoa. Where are they playing Major Burns this year? We talked about it. Where, where's Major Burns going? Star position. Major Burns, not really good in coverage. Good coming downhill. He's physical. He'll put his nose in there. He'll attack the football. Yeah, he can help you in the run. That's going to be the star. But also can turn and cover a little bit when you have him on a, a guy that's not a physical mismatch. You need him to cover a tight end. He's big enough to do it. You need him to go cover the other team's best receiver. That ain't going to happen. The two guys he mentioned, two guys that have changed position to their more natural position. Oh, it's going well? Shocker. Of course you're going to play better when you're in your more natural position. But the key to that is having corners that can cover. Yeah, I'd love to have Sage Ryan at safety and Major Burns at star. But I need corners that can cover. So how much better? This this is the question. We don't know the answer. And you heard him say it. Look, they've improved. The corners backs have improved. they got a long way to go. But when you talk about those freshmen that were playing there last year, if it's you know, Toviano was playing corner and Stamps as a true freshman. I mean, you had some guys that were out of position. Jeremiah Hughes, a true freshman last year, was turned around a little bit. You know, you're going to get Zy Alexander coming off of injury. I'm excited to see what Jair Brown, the Ohio State transfer, looks like. I'll be excited whenever they do get J.K. Johnson back to see if he's a guy that can give you actual reps on the boundary playing man coverage. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know it. You don't. Nobody knows it yet. We're going to have to wait and see. But just having guys that are more confident that they can play the position, if you call zone coverage that they can actually go execute it and not get turned around, you got receivers running out, in running out of the screen where there's no defender in sight. How many times do we see oh, there's, there's a receiver scoring a touchdown, there's no defender in the camera shot? All right, you run zone and, no, and you lose assignments, that's what happens. You want to go play man? Great. You have cornerbacks good enough to do it. We'll find out. One guy that he did was also asked about was P.J. Woodland. P.J. Woodland's one of the freshmen, and this is an interesting one too because if you remember when we talked about them when they, when they took P.J. Woodland, there were two cornerbacks that were committed in this class. It was Andre Evans and Kai Bates, and they were kids from Orlando and Nashville, and they were four stars, and they got, they got processed out of the class is basically what happened. I'll just I'll say it now. They, they were committed under Polian, they had some changes on the staff, obviously. Frank Wilson is the recruiting coordinator. And they were like, eh, not those two. And they ended up signing two different cornerbacks. One out of Mississippi, one out of New Orleans. One of them was P.J. Woodland. And they were three stars. They weren't as highly rated by the star rating by, by, the, by the scouting services as the two that they, that they sort of you know, pushed out of the class. But we said it here. Do you trust Frank Wilson that he knows what he's looking for? Well, one of them was P.J. Woodland. And here's what Blake Baker had to say about the freshman corner. Competitiveness. P.J. Woodland is, he is a competitor. He's Dog. feisty. He'll throw it in there. He's physical. Dog. And he can run. But more than anything, for a freshman, 
or high school senior, as you put it. You know, we've thrown him out there with the one some, uh, thrown him out there against our, our top receivers, and he competes. And uh, that's where it starts. But he's got the physical tools. And so I've been really, really impressed by him. It wasn't easy, you know. The, uh, <laughs> I promise you, those first three days before spring break, he probably thought, what in the world did I do, you know, coming, coming here and coming here early. But, man, he's, he's been really impressive these last few days. He's a dog. I, I don't know the kid at all. But I know Frank Wilson was here during the 10 years at LSU in the secondary. was awesome. And if he said, that kid can play, I want that kid. I'm not telling you P.J. Woodland's going to be a freshman All-American. I have no idea. But I know the kind of athlete LSU had in that secondary for a long time that wasn't there last year. They're getting him back. Again, I, I'm, I'll repeat this a million times between now and the start of the season. Your offense was the best in the country. It's not going to be the best in the country this year. It's going to be, but it's going to be really good. It's going to go from 1 to 10. Your defense was 106th in the country. They're awful. I'm not telling you you got to go from 106 to 20. Can you go from 106 to 50? Can you just be not the worst defense in the history of the program? And then what does that gap look like? Interested to see, man. Optimism eternal. During the springtime. All right, we got to grab a quick break. Sean Fazan joins us next. Talk some Saints AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Clegg's Nursery. Four locations in the Greater Baton Rouge area. Segan near Airline. LA 16 in Denham. Mid-City on Donmore. And the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. It's Clegg's Nursery. Hey, get by uh, their Facebook page as well. Um, I mean, everybody's got a Facebook account. Just, you know, Three billion people in the world with a Facebook account. I just go to the Clegg's Nursery Facebook page. They're so good about posting when they have uh, new arrivements. So they have a uh, tree form shrimp plants that are thirty four ninety nine a piece. They're just in. They just posted this today. So man, if you want to plant something, like just I will say, just plant something. Get in your yard. Go buy some beautiful flowers, plants. If you're not sure what to plant, they can help. the The horticulturists at Clegg's are so helpful. The thing that I will generally do is take a picture. Take a picture of my garden, the back. Say, what would look good here? And they'll know based on the shade I have, how much attention and time I want to give to my lawn and garden. They can help you. It's Clegg's Nursery. Buy local, shop local. Tell them Matt sent you. Clegg's Nursery. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink, 
are a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit After further review with Matt Moscona. And three weeks from today, three weeks from today, first round of the NFL draft, I'm fired up for it. Our buddy Sean Fazan, good enough to hang out with us here for uh, a couple of minutes, talk some, uh, talk some black and gold. How are you, man? Doing all right. Three weeks. Wow. Yeah. That's, uh, it's, it's here, isn't it? Yeah. Three weeks from today. Are, yeah. Are you going to be here? Are you going to be up in Detroit? No, I, I always cover it here down in the, uh, at the Saints facility. Um, uh, so no, I won't be in Detroit. I'll be here in New Orleans. When, uh, when you look at the approach to this year's draft, I think the consensus is they got to go tackle, got to go offensive line at, at 14. Are you, are you in that, that category? I very much am. I just don't see the, the way they attack free agency, or I guess you'd call a lack of attack in free agency with more moderate tempered approach I just I don't I don't see how you could avoid it uh considering the hole you have and not one but possibly uh two tackle positions because you just don't know what's going to happen with Ramchek and you don't know who's going to actually settle in at left tackle um and you know this is a year fortunately for them uh slight silver line it's, it's, a, it's a decent spot for them to land a very good tackle in the first round of the draft but unlike in years past I think this year, I don't think they have much of a choice. I think they've got to go tackle uh, to address their biggest vulnerability. You think they move up? Possibly. They always have um, at some point in the draft. I don't know if it's going to happen in the first round. I think it could happen possibly on day three, to be honest with you. But it's always possible for them to, to move up uh, with either a future pick or, I mean, they got the 45th overall pick. I don't know if you'd. I don't know how far up they would have to go yeah. uh, if they want to use the, round, the second round pick. I'm not sure. I've, I'd be a huge fan of that. But nonetheless, I think it's certainly possible if they want to go up a few spots, uh, throw in a fifth round or a pick next year uh, to go up and get a guy that may be slipping and falling that could, you know, potentially uh, be one of their guys that doesn't just, uh, they don't just draft, but could potentially be a guy that, that starts from day one because I think that also has to factor in as well. You know, Sean, it's so interesting. Last year before the draft, we all kind of knew there was like this consensus, like they were going to draft a running back somewhere. Like, we all knew what a need that was. People talked about Kendra Miller. Uh, there was a lot of talk about, help me, the, the running back from Tulane. I'm blanking on his name. Tajay Spears. Spears, thank you. He's at Tennessee yeah. now. Um, we talked so much about that as like a, like a 1A, 1B need. Do you see a position like that this year for New Orleans where you're like, man, I would be fall over stunned if they didn't take someone to that position? O outside of offensive tackle, which we all think they'll probably do at 14. I think... If you if you were to ask, people would say edge pass rusher, but the more I look at the depth at the pass rushing position, uh, the more I, yes, of course you could add at that position. But I'm not sure it's the the glaring need with the investment in Chase Young, and I know there's the health scare, but you've invested so much in that position. I think they have six or seven guys at edge pass rusher. If there were the next need for me, it would be defensive tackle. To be honest with okay. you, because they lost Malcolm Roach, he's not a I think it's probably an underrated loss. They don't, they're not very deep at that position. It's not an easy position to find. You mentioned last year's draft. I mean, that was the, the position they targeted, defensive tackle, but I still think you can add uh, some depth there. Um, other than that, you know, you can look at the wide receiver position. You can look at maybe the tight end position. But um, I would think offensive tackle just jumps off the top of the page, obviously. And if I were going, it would probably be – Defensive tackle with the investment uh, of Chase Young at defensive end, and plus the track record of, frankly, swinging and missing at that position. Mm. Uh, so, Saunders, Shepard, Brzee, and you're thinking, okay, who's someone else that could be in that rotation on the interior? Absolutely, yeah. I, I think that would that would be it. Absolutely, because I mean, you, a you rotate those guys a lot. Um, B, look, I like Brzee. Uh, I think he's got a high ceiling, and I think he can get there, but he's not there yet. I think Saunders is a decent player, and Shepard is a guy. Who's a veteran? He's over thirty years old, but I mean, you need you need some some young talent up, up at that position. So I think it, that's a 
a spot you can come in and, and draft a guy that can get worked themselves into the rotation. You know, you know, like you've covered this team and, and the organization so long. A lot of times when you're that close, like sometimes you know what they're thinking, even if they don't say it. So I'm curious, uh -huh. do you think, um, is there maybe this component, Sean, where like Dennis Allen knows he's a good defensive coordinator and they're going to be fine defensively? But they got to make the offensive thing work with Derek Carr because of the investment they made and just and everything uh -huh. there. So maybe they lean heavily. That's that's why I keep looking. I'm going wide receiver, tight end. I mean, they got to get Derek Carr weapons. So like I look at 45 and I go in a deep wide receiver draft, they're going to be somebody that's really good on the board at 45. Maybe that's the direction they go. Do you think that's part of the of the thought process with Allen and Loomis this year? Yeah, absolutely. I think there is a thought that defensively. D.A. is a good enough defensive mind that, that the defense is going to be fine. Um, and they've still got enough players, enough playmakers to wear, and, and a strategist that, that head coach slash defensive coordinator in this Allen, where they're going to be fine. But this whole thing hinges on getting the most out of Derek Carr to get back into the postseason, but obviously a new offensive coordinator. And I, I think, you know, you mentioned wide receiver, but I also feel like we've been waiting forever, forever for an athletic tight end to emerge. I mean, yeah. think about how many times we've been thinking – and talking about, oh, this could be the next tight end, this could be the next tight end, it just has never materialized really since Jimmy Graham the first go around, if you if you want to be honest, in terms of uh, playmakers at that position. But I thought D.A. kind of showed his hand a little bit at the either the combine or the NFL owners meetings where he said, you know, he, he clarified pass catcher. So um, that could either be a pass catching tight end or a wide receiver. Clearly they want to add some uh, another – sort of athletic person in the passing game to help Derek Carr, who's always flourished when he's had sort of playmaking tight end. Kobe Fleener. Uh, oh. <laughs> Jer Jer Jared Cook, Ben Watson, uh, Adam Troutman. We can go down the list, man. They have yeah. been searching. You're right. I mean, they've just – they've never found the guy. We thought Juwan Johnson might be the guy. Um, if that guy's on the board, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, a couple more for you here. Sean Fazan's with us, Fox 8, on, on Twitter, at Sean Fazan, Fox 8. You'll give him a follow. Uh, do you have any sense as to whether or not they might add anybody else via free agency before the draft? Well, they added a, a linebacker today, uh, a reserve linebacker. It's going to play some special teams with uh, Kalik Hudson was in Washington for four seasons. Yeah, it could be um, sort of that minor one-year deal, um, you know, depth-type player. Uh, I, I am I am a little surprised they haven't gone out and, and signed just even if it's a a 32 year old tackle just someone but just because of the optics of how big that hole looks at two spots when you talk about the tackle position and it was so frankly upfront with the Ryan Ramchek situation and how they're they're discouraged about where he's at from a health perspective that um, I'm surprised that they haven't at least gone out uh, and, and brought either brought back Andrews Pete or, or signed a veteran. Just for the sake of, we need somebody there that 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 can just, if for nothing else, compete at that spot. Um, certainly possible that could still happen. Um, you know, and it's certainly possible after the draft. There's always that that late May June wave where you, guys that you don't necessarily think are there, but they're there, and you might bring the guy in uh, at that time. So yeah, I, I don't think they're done done with signing you know players outside of the draft, but the big names I think obviously uh, are with other teams. Yeah, they've usually been pretty active later in free agency. I just Cap situations don't always allow them to be super active at the beginning. Of, you know, save a guy like Derek Carr or somebody like that. Would uh, if if you had a perfect scenario for this draft, would it involve drafting a quarterback? Uh, me personally, no. Um, okay. Unless it was one of the top guys that that really had slipped and fell in, in the first round at fourteen. I'm not. I I, I don't. I'm not crazy in love with the idea of another mid-round, maybe this guy can develop into something. Thing. I think they kind of took that route uh, last year with Jake Hayner. But if, you're, uh, if, one of the, if you like the guy um, for the first-round grade at 14 and he was one of the top three, if we had a, a crazy slide uh, with the top four quarterbacks that are certainly uh, the ones we're talking about, and all of a sudden that player was available at 14, they could potentially – you think the guy's got franchise material and could potentially – you know, reset the franchise, and possibly, or you know, if you had a first round grade on a guy and at forty five, uh, maybe he's in, within reach to go up a couple spots and get maybe, um, but mm. only if, in my opinion, only if you think that guy uh, can be a starter at some point. But I, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's it's the it's the gotta have 
uh, scenario that uh, last year, I, I mean, I, I knew they were going to invest in the young player because it was something that they had wanted to do. But uh, this year, I know they're high on Jake Hayner. So uh, if it's another, hey, we might develop this guy into a backup, I don't know if they, they go that route this year. He's on Twitter at Sean Fazan, Fox 8. Make sure you follow him there. Good stuff, man. Always great to chat. Thanks for a couple of minutes. All right, man. Appreciate it. Be well. We're brought to you by South Point Volkswagen, southpointvw.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge and online at southpointvw.com. I do want to circle back to something about the quarterbacks that Sean said that reminded me of something. Southpointvw.com. Hey, look, if you're in the market for a vehicle, it's a great time to get on by South Point Volkswagen. Remember, as Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer, because they move more Volkswagens than anyone, they can give you a better deal than anyone. Like right now, 0% APR for 60 months. 0% for 60 months on select models? That's five years. 0% on Tiguan for 60 months. It's a compact SUV. You know, great for the, uh, if, you're, if you're buying that first vehicle for maybe your, your high school or college grad, and you want to have them in something that they'll love to drive, but you get the peace of mind because it's safe and it's affordable, South Point Volkswagen. Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer, southpointvw.com, South Point Volkswagen. What's your direction? Um, I, I was working earlier today on sort of a Saints draft history quarterback and, and an approach in this year's draft and how they may look ahead at the quarterback position. I'm going to do it on tomorrow's show. I'm not, I wasn't quite ready with everything I wanted to, to go to air with. So we'll do that tomorrow. Um, you know, but the the point that Sean was making about, you know, the, this team believes in Jake Hayner was, uh, was interesting because I'm curious from the Saints' perspective. We don't, I don't know this, but how, do they believe in Jake Hayner as a backup or do they believe in Jake Hayner as a starter? And I think the bigger thesis is when you look at the New Orleans Saints' approach at quarterback throughout its history – Something that seems to reveal itself is they don't, and I'm not just talking about first round. I just mean in general at quarterback, they don't address it in the draft. Uh, I, I, I looked it up earlier. In 57 years, the Saints have drafted a quarterback 22 times in 57 years and only once in round one. So the argument could be made they're never drafting a quarterback looking for a starter. They've always looked at it from a depth backup position. And is that the right approach? Well, the organization's history would kind of let you believe no. But anyway, I'm going to go much deeper on that tomorrow and, and illustrate that. So you'll want to catch that on tomorrow's show. And if you're not here tomorrow for whatever reason, um, we'll make sure we get it up on podcast and YouTube as well. All right, it's after further review. Let me knock out a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, LSU and Vandy. Game one out at the box. We're 29 minutes away from first pitch. Just a gotta-have-it game for LSU. Uh, we'll go through the starting lineups and what to expect tonight. It, it is posted, so we'll go through the starting lineups tonight for LSU and Vanderbilt. Game one of this three-game series out at the box. Don't you move. It's AFR. AFR. Man, I got to say publicly again, big thanks to, to Mike Medin, Chuck Montero, the whole gang over there at, at, uh, at Action Industries. Got to hang out with Connie and, uh, and Adam in the suite yesterday. Uh, at the Pels game. It was such a good time. And they're great people. They're a great local business that's been around since since 1982. Man, 42 years. Action industry servicing the petrochemical and refinery markets. So, man, if you're a you know, maintenance manager, a turnaround coordinator, our friends at Action, man, just give them a shot. Give them a shot to earn your business for whatever job it might be. And also, you know, they offer fabrication shop services as well. Pipe, structural steel, pressure vessels. They also have food-grade fabrication. Uh, they work with one of the largest coffee brands in the world. So if you need additional resources for your job, maybe a shortage of skilled labor, Action Industries, they can help supplement your mega projects. There's so many ways they can work with you. It's Action Industries. Check them out online at Action Industries. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly 
is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or LAinsurance.net. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. After further review with Matt Moscona. You know, when you look at the top programs, you know, over the 10, 20 years, their consistency is the one to be modeled. You know, a couple national championships, uh, several Omaha appearances, been to the finals four times. So I, I admire the consistency. I think in looking at their team, incredibly athletic, you know, most one of, if not the most athletic team in the country. Jay Johnson talking about Vanderbilt. Tim Corbin's squad comes into uh, Alec Box Stadium for a um, three-game series that gets underway tonight between the Tigers and the Commodores. Game one lineups are posted, so here's how LSU is going to line it up tonight. Um, Mac, uh, it is uh, Holman who's going to pitch tonight. We talked about that uh, in hour number one. We kind of got that word earlier today. So they'll go Holman jump TBA for game three. And if this is a game where you feel like you got to have it, you want your best on the bump. I mean, it's 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 really that simple. It's not really it doesn't take a lot of explanation why they're going to do what they're going to do. Of course, last week they pitched off. They went sort of whole staff on Thursday, and then they came back with Holman and Jump, thinking and give yourself an advantage on the bump in games two and three. See what happens against Hagen Smith, and you, know, you came up snake eyes. You uh you you, you get swept. Well, now you're two and seven in the conference. You're at home. You got to have it, and you're going to throw your best guy out there, and that's Luke Holman. So Holman will pitch for LSU tonight. Okay, here's the lineup. Uh, they'll go Bingham, White, Jones, Travinsky, Braswell, Pearson, uh, Kling. I'm sorry, Bingham, White, Jones, Neil, Travinsky, Braswell, Pearson, Kling, Milam. So let's walk through this. Uh, Bingham's going to uh, play left and lead off. Tommy White in the two-hole play third base. Uh, Jared Jones playing first and batting third. Brady Neal is going to catch tonight. He'll be in the uh, in the cleanup spot. Hayden Travinsky will DH and bat fifth. Michael Braswell playing short, batting sixth. And then uh, Pearson and right, Kling in center. 
And then Milam uh, at second base in the nine hole. So I, the one thing that I, I might want to see differently here would be would be Braswell leading off, just flipping Braswell and Bingham. Um, and the the only reason is LSU has struggled to to find consistency in the leadoff spot and getting guys on base for their run producers. Uh, if I'm being very fair, the entire lineup has struggled. I mean, they're hitting 243 in league play as a team. So everybody struggled. But Braswell isn't just leading the SEC, uh, isn't just leading LSU, he's leading the SEC in on-base percentage in league games at 541. So he's gotten on base. There's a fair argument to be made that maybe a big part of the reason that is he's hitting in the bottom of the order, and if you moved him to the top, that uh, the, the pressure of that situation might fare a little differently. But I do like that Jay is going with his veterans in this game. And I know he's given Ethan Fry and Ashton Larson, he's given, he's given Jake Brown opportunities. I'm not opposed to giving young, talented guys opportunities. But in this game in particular... As we've talked about Vanderbilt, this is a Vanderbilt team that has uh, that that is not a, a an offensive juggernaut. They they collectively as a team in league play have hit pretty well, but they're not a power hitting team. They have four home runs as a team in league play. By comparison, LSU's got seventeen. So this isn't the type of team that's going to beat you with a three run homer. They're going to beat you by stringing together hits, getting on base via walk. So make them beat you by, if they're going to put up a crooked number, they're going to put up four hits in an inning. And the way Luke Coleman is pitched this year, I just don't know that that's going to happen. So what I want is my best defensive lineup behind Luke Coleman, and I want veterans who aren't who have been in... in who've been on the stage in the moment before. And, you know, we've talked a lot about Kling this year, and I know offensively he is an out. Like, I'm, I'm not sitting here telling you he might figure it out. At this point, you have to believe he won't. He's an out. But he's also your best center fielder. And against this team, if you want your best defensive lineup in the field, he's in center. If you want to support Luke Holman with great defense behind him, yes, I want either... I want either Malazzo or Neal behind the plate. As good a player as Travinsky is, as much of a veteran as he is wearing the number eight, he's your he is your least option. If I can say this in a polite way, he's your least option as a defensive catcher. And so many times people focus on the caught stealing number. It's not that. It's can you steal strikes in the way you receive the baseball and frame pitches? You block up balls. It's it's. Can you manage your pitcher and the staff? It's all of that stuff. And yes, Malazzo and Neal are better. They're just they're better defensive catchers than Travinsky. So give me Neal behind the plate. Let Travinsky not have to worry mentally about having and physically catching nine innings. That's going to make him a better offensive player as well. So you know, Pearson and right Bingham. And that's your best outfield. Left to right going Bingham, Kling, Pearson. Like that's that's your best option in the outfield. And I like having Milam at second as well. I know he's a freshman, but he's going to give you a competitive at bat, and I like him in the nine hole as well. I like him hitting at the bottom of the order, taking some pressure off, not having to be the table setter at the top. So I like this lineup. I, I like. Ex I think Jay Johnson nailed it with what he's doing today. Bingham, White, Jones, Neil, Travinsky, Braswell, Pearson, Kling, Milam with Holman on the bump. You got your what I think is, is probably your best defensive lineup in the field. You got your boppers in the middle. You take some pressure off of Kling and Milam, batting them eight and nine. You know Bingham's a guy that's got you know eight hundred career at bats in college. Let him go lead off for you. He's not going. So the stage isn't going to be too big for him. Uh, and you got Holman on the bump. So let's see, man. It's a big one for LSU. It's not often you'd say that just in the fourth week of SEC play, but it's a national broadcast, of course, with ESPN two tonight, SEC Network tomorrow, then plus on Saturday for Game three. But at two and seven in the league, with with your ace on the bump, needing something good to happen, bounce back after being swept, losing to Southern, 
I think Jay's putting his best his best foot forward here with Holman and the lineup that he's got with a bunch of veterans. So we'll see how they do tonight uh, with first pitch about 17 minutes from right now. Hey, I've really enjoyed telling you about Optimize Generator People. Listen, there's a lot of businesses that sell automatic home standby generators. With Optimize, they're Louisiana's number one Generac dealer. So when it comes to Generac automatic home standby generators, you want to optimize because they're the best. Go to generatorpeople.com. That's generatorpeople.com. Listen, after Ida, we had an automatic home standby generator installed, and it's one of the best decisions I've ever made. Seriously. Everyone thinks, oh, that's a great idea. I should do that. Then the storm comes, and you regret not doing it. Listen, optimize. They have honest upfront pricing. They're never going to give you a price and have add-ons. The price they tell you is the price it is. They work with your, your, the, the city parish to get your permits. They work with your power company to get the generator hooked up. There's so many things that go into an install as well. You want to make sure it's done properly. The major differentiator with Optimize and everybody else is there's a lot of companies, great companies, that do a lot of different things and they have a generator division, right? You go to some of these companies' websites, you'll see that. They, they do a lot of different stuff and there's a generator division. Optimize, all they do, 100% of their business is Generac Automatic Home Standby Generators. That is what they do. They serve Optimize services the entire 10-12 corridor. So if you're listening to us in Lake Charles, in Lafayette, if you're Mandeville, Covington on the North Shore, if you're in New Orleans, they just opened up their facility in New Orleans. They've been servicing New Orleans. They now have a, a right by the airport, as a matter of fact, at the, uh, the Loyola exit. It's Optimize. Go to generatorpeople.com. That's generatorpeople.com. One more time, generatorpeople.com. Okay. It's after further review. We'll knock on our final break of the show. When we come back, we'll do some otter locks. Uh, Jimmy did send us one play. Is that the only one for tonight? Okay, cool. He sent us one play. It's a basketball play. We'll get to that to wrap up the show. When we come back on AFR. AFR. Y'all, the home market is bouncing back. I was having a conversation with Darren James last week inventory is starting to come back on the market and buyers are starting to get active again. The recent drop in interest rates, I think has really mobilized a lot of buyers. So if you are thinking about selling your home before the market is flooded with inventory and you start to see a lot of competition, this is the time right now. It's a seller's market. So make sure you call Darren James. If you're thinking about selling your home, wondering what the appraisal would be, how your home would stack up in the market, how many days on market, Darren would assume. You got to call Darren James and have this conversation. 335-7666, 335-7666. If you need a realtor, you need the best. You need Darren James. Think real estate, think Darren James. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. 
Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Rec teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. BRAC, your number one park system in the nation. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road. After further review with Matt Moscona. Down the stretch, we come final segment here on a Thursday edition of AFR. Uh, Otter did send us one pick for tonight. 0 for 2 last night for the Otter on his baseball picks. I'm going to be honest, I forgot to play the baseball picks last night. <laughs> he was 0 for 2. Okay, so uh, sorry, I can't help you there, man. I'm just making sure there wasn't something else I missed. Um, he had Pittsburgh and Toronto who both lost last night. So Otter was 0 for 2 on his baseball picks. One play tonight, it is uh, the NIT... A championship game. He's got Seton Hall. I'm um, looking at DraftKings right now. It's three and a half, so buy it to four. Of course, always buy the half a point. So Seton Hall uh, plus four against Indiana State tonight in the NIT. That's uh, Otter's only pick tonight for Otter Lock. So Jimmy, for those that have missed it, Jimmy has been on uh, spring break. <laughs> his, uh, his, he's chaperoning his son's spring break, which is a terrifying thought. But um, we appreciate him for continuing to send us the, the plays when he can jump. I think he jumped on with us one day earlier this week, but uh, otherwise he's just sending us the plays. So we do appreciate that. Seton Hall is the Otter's one play tonight. By the way, if you're looking at LSU, um, and we've talked a good bit about LSU and Vandy, 10 minutes away from first pitch. When I checked it earlier today, LSU is a minus 166 favorite in this game. Let's see what it is right now. Um, yeah, still minus 166. Well, LSU's a heavy favorite in this ball game tonight. Um, I always hate, I know we've talked about it a bunch today, I, I hate to to overemphasize a game in a 30-game schedule. But man, it just feels like this one. With all the bad that's happened, um, being swept, Southern game, all, you're going Holman today, bumping him up a day. Got to go get this one today. Um, we'll get to what we learned in a second. Reminder about Evermore. Um Man, I've loved this relationship with Evermore. It's a great product. If you're watching this, you'll see I have the Evermore bottle here on the set. And then I've got my big 64-ounce <laughs> bottle on the on the chair down there. So this is the one I actually drink during, during the show because that's the prop. But Evermore, natural artesian water, nothing added or removed. Uh, it's, I mean, we're talking about an artesian well right there in Covington. And... They pipe into the ground. They pull the water out of the of this natural well. Nothing added or taken away. It's just filtered, right? So you don't have like dirt or whatever in the ground in it. And it goes right into the bottle. It's an amazing process. It's a healthier option for your family, for your kid. If you're an athlete, you want better hydration. It's Evermore. It's a Louisiana product. Y'all check it out. E-V-A-M-O-R. You can order online, evermore.com, evermore.com. Or when you go into great local retailers, make sure you look for Evermore. E-V-A-M-O-R. Give it a try. And the other thing, too, look at other water bottles, and you'll see. Like, I pointed one out yesterday. One of the big, big brands that you all know really well. It says, minerals added for taste. There's nothing added to this. Zero. It is a 100% natural artesian 
well water. It's amazing. Check it out. Evermore.com. E-V-A-M-O-R. Evermore.com. Okay. Um, what did we learn today? Polly? what did you learn today? I learned that uh, Haley Van Lith has entered the NCAA transfer portal. A little surprising, I think, for some. Say it again, man. Um, props to Haley Van Lith. I'm looking at a lot of the Twitter replies to that. There's a lot of LSU fans that are like, bye bye. But I mean, Haley Van Lith was one of the top scorers in the country a year ago. She came to LSU. LSU didn't have a point guard. So in her senior year, she changed positions. She's not a point guard. She ran the point this year because Kim Mulkey needed a point guard. And so Haley Van Lith took one for the team. She should have your utmost respect for being a team player and saying, you know what? I don't need to score 20 a night. I'm going to do what we have to do to help the team win. And she, and she, as a senior in college, changed positions. Like, I respect the hell out of her for that. Good for her. Good luck to, to her, where, whatever is next. Uh, Muse, what did you learn today? Uh, I learned that Kendall Rogers' son is calling a shot with the Texans Super Bowl. How about that? Yeah. I mean, they were really good last year. CJ Stroud MVP. How's that play looking? Maybe potentially. Yeah. That's, That's Stephon Diggs. Eh? Diggs. He was doing that with like Tank Dell last year, man. Tank Dell ended up being a really good player. He did. But I mean, going into the season, nobody was like, oh, Tank Dell. Well, you sure. Know? But at the same time, you can be. We weren't yeah. thinking CJ Stroud was a potential MVP candidate. It's he had true. the greatest statistical rookie season ever, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's Stephon Diggs. We'll see how that goes. What did you learn, Matt? Uh, that we have a power hour. At least today we did. Yeah. We had a power hour today. We did. For the uh, for the Dreams Come True Radiothon. Something that Muse neglected to tell us until like 40 past. Do we know if we got donations on the power hour? I, I don't I don't have no. access to that. No. no. Go to 1045ESPN.com <laughs> and donate to Dreams Come True Radiothon. Whoever's phone number that was has That's access right. to they, that. They certainly have access yeah. to that. Uh, hey, quick reminder about Pure Restoration, pure-restoration.com, pure-restoration.com. If you have mold, think you might. Odors, pet odor, urine, sweat, gyms, workout facilities, Pure Restoration. Patented non-toxic dry fog. They'll come in, spray that fog as soon as it dissipates. Bada-bing, bada-bang, bada-boom. You're back in free and clear. Residential, get you that couple hours easy pure restoration pure dash restoration.com or just message me scone what's the mold thing i'll tell you use Polly. i appreciate it y'all have an awesome night go tigers we'll see you tomorrow at three afr to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family sized water park, miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected.